Hello, you guys. How are you all on this wonderful, great day? What a great day it is to be back in the presence of our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and our personal Messiah and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Um, tonight's message is going to be entitled, The Sins of Two Sisters. The Sins of Two Sisters. First, I'm going to start off by mentioning uh, the bipartisan bill that Biden just signed into law. Now, you know when something's bipartisan, that means that two parties have agreed on an outcome or a result. But Biden signed into law this bipartisanship bill that will boost the U.S. competitiveness with China. Because what they're looking to do is they have dumped $52 billion within the science industry and semiconductors and also the chip manufacturing industry. So you know what that means. That means that these RFID chips that are being inserted in people to turn them into transhumans, this whole mark of the beast thing is being facilitated right in front of our faces. So people need to gear up and understand what's really happening. Um, so it all has to do with the intertwining of, of iron and clay, mixing man with machine, this nanotechnology, transhumanism, biohacking, and biometric system where people will become computers. There will be no more computers. Your whole body will become a computer. You'll be the phone. You will be the keys to your car. Your health records and all of your financial transactions and deposits will be computed inside of your body. The way you think, what you think. Everything will be, will be um, identified by this chip in your body, in your right hand, RFID chip, radio frequency, frequency. See, we back to the frequencies again, radio frequency, identification chip. Now what spirit is going through that frequency? None other than the spirit of the anti Mashiach, the man of lawlessness, right? The mark of the beast, the beast system, the new beast system. See, so this is going to affect everybody. And then the Neuralink chip by Elon Musk, you know, they're going to try to put the Neuralink chip in your head cause they want to, uh, soup up humans by causing them to be intelligent, all knowing, right? All knowing like the heavenly father. They want you to be all knowing. They want you to be intelligent, smart as a whip. They don't want you to be sick. They don't want you to get tired. They want you to utterly be a slave in this new B system that they are facilitating, right? So what I am saying is that, uh, be mindful of everything that is happening. So you already see that the unrolling or the unfolding of this anti mashiach B system is being uh, unfolded and rolled out before our eyes. Now, I want to get into the sins of the two sisters. Now, the sins of the two sisters represent Judah and Israel. Now, we know that Israel was a whole entire complete kingdom before it was split apart in 930 BC during the reign of King Solomon, right? Now, there were three kings during the completion or the entirety of the kingdom of Israel. There were three kings. That would happen to be uh, King Saul, King David, and then his son, King Solomon. But we know in 930 BC, the kingdom of Israel split into two, the Northern kingdom of Israel and the Southern kingdom of Judah, right? We know that because of the sins of these two sisters, but also the sins of King Solomon. See, meshing with these pagan deities, these pagan gods. Now, now King Solomon has 700 wives and 300 concubines. And this is where he was introduced. And this is how he was introduced to these pagan deities, right? Ashtoreth, who was this goddess of sexual love and war. She was a goddess of the Sidonians. And then you had Baal, who was a Canaanite god of sensuality, sexuality, and making it rain, right? Then you had Molech, the god of child sacrifice, of the Ammonites. Then you had Shamash, the god of the Moabites, okay? That was the fish god, the destroyer, see? Asherah, Asherah, the, the, the goddess of motherhood, fertility, and love and war. This is how you have this sexual spirit of love and war looming over the world today, especially amongst Judah and Israel. Now, the problem with Judah is, is Judah has a problem with money, sex, and power, especially the men, all right? 
And women, they had a problem with Asherah. Why? Because it was all about motherhood. See, women, most women or many women during ancient Israel, their goal was to be mothers, right? But then what they would do is they would sacrifice, right? They would sacrifice the child. See, they would sacrifice their children. They would sacrifice their children to Molech. They would sacrifice their children to Baal. This is what they would do. Um, now, now we know that these sins of worshiping these pagan gods, that is what got Israel and Judah sent into captivity. Right now in 722 BC, the Assyrians got Israel sent into captivity. The, the, as the Assyrians had taken the northern kingdom of Israel, okay, into captivity. The, the Assyrians. And then in five, and then in 605 BC, 597 BC, and 586 BC, that was the captivity of Judah, where the Babylonians had exiled Judah into captivity. But now these two captivities were because of the sins. Now, I need y'all to get this. Baal worship was all about more money and more sex. That was Baal worship. Just like what we have today in the Baal system is more money, more sex, and more power. Well, Asherah was all about more beauty and more sexual desire. It was all about beauty and being sexy. That was the Asherah spirit. Well, see, that Asherah spirit is over our daughters of Zion today. It's all about beauty and being sexy. And then the Baal worship is about more money and more sex. See, men worship Baal while the women worship Asherah. So even today, you see how this Baal and this Asherah spirit is looming over the world still today amongst our people. Right. So these are the sins of the two sisters, you know, and so Baal was the driving force behind all of the the decadence and the sexual immorality it, and, 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 and the and the and the injustice. The injustice that was caused. See, all the kings and the officials and the judges and some of the priests, they engaged with Baal. They engaged with Baal. Why? Because they relied on Baal to make it rain. They relied on Baal to make it rain. Rain what? Blessings. So that means that if you're going in opposition to our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and you're not doing anything that he says to do, yet you have money, power, and you have a lot of sex, that's a clear indication that that's Baal blessing you. That's not our Heavenly Father blessing you. So this is how you know that people are working for the Baal system today, right now. In the United States of America, the bail system is alive and well right now, incorporated into the American dream. Oh, y'all need to get what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, let's go here. I want to go to, let's go to First Kings. Let's go to First Kings. Let's go to First Kings. Now, people don't realize that now, now. Asherah, they made an Asherah pole to pay homage to this uh, fertility goddess of motherhood and love and war. They built an Asherah pole. They carved this Asherah pole out of wood. And so this Asherah pole is symbolic today to the stripper pole, although they didn't slide down the Asherah pole because it was made out of wood, but they slide down the metal pole today. But that pole represents prostitution and whoredom. Right. And and, 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 and it, it represents sexual lust. So today, when you have prostitutes and strippers sliding down this pole, it's symbolic to the Asherah pole because the Asherah pole is how they participated in temple prostitution back then. See, in the shrine of Asherah, in the shrines in the temple of Baal and Asherah, see, you got to realize that they had temple prostitutes that were ready to engage with Israelite men. And this is how they paid homage to Baal. 
This is how they this, this is how they pay homage. This is how the men paid homage to Baal by having sexual intercourse, sexual immorality with Asherah. Because in order for them to get the most out of their blessing, they needed Baal and Asherah to come together. Right now, Asherah is the wife and mother of Baal, just like Semiramis is the mother and wife of Nimrod. Because I told you all of these pagan gods and goddesses stem from Babylon because they all fit that pagan trinity of the father, son, God, Nimrod, the mother, moon, goddess, Semiramis, and the reborn son, God, Tammuz, right? Who is Nimrod reincarnated. But now this is what got Israel and Judah in trouble. Just like it's getting us in trouble today. So now what do you have over the world today? You have the spirit of Baal and Asherah, but these are the sins of the two sisters of Israel and Judah. All right. I'm going to try to, I'm, I'm, I got to go, y'all. So I'm going to be quick with this message here. I'm going to be straight to the point. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 14, verses 15 through 16, because I'm going to run down the sins that, um, that they engaged in. So see, this is what's, this is the main driving force and motivation of men today. What do men want? What do what do our men want? Our Af so-called African American men, the Negroes, Judah. What do what does Judah men want? They want money, they want power, and they want sex. But on top of that, they want alcohol and drugs too, because that's what's a part of this culture of the bail system. That's what's a part of this culture. Okay, listen, 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 15 through 16. And Yahuwah will strike Israel so that it will be like a reed swaying in the water. And Yahuwah will strike Israel, right? Yahuwah struck Israel by sending them into captivity by the Assyrians. Because of what? Baal worship. Baal and Asher will worship. So that it will be like a reed swaying in the water, like a plant swaying in the water. He will uproot Israel from this good land that he gave to their ancestors and scattered them beyond the Euphrates River because they aroused Yahuwah's anger by doing what? Making Asher repose. They made Asher repose. So that was the sin that got Israel sent into captivity by the Assyrians. This is how Yahuwah gave Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her right on away because of that. Because you got to realize these two sisters, these two sisters were in a covenant. We are, we are supposed to be in a covenant with Yahuwah. Why? Because he's our spiritual husband. But see, Israel and Judah broke the covenant by fornicating, by committing adultery with these pagan deities, these pagan gods and goddesses. See, so what's the, what was the real problem? It was sexual worship. It was sex. Well, that's the problem today. Sexual worship. See? Having babies out of wedlock. And then the mother aborts them. The daddy can't be nowhere. He, the daddy's nowhere to be found. The Judah men is nowhere to be found. Because they out there tricking and whoring and slutting around. And running around the world trying to get more daughters of Zion. Leaving the mother. Leaving the mother pregnant. To have a baby born out of wedlock. To do what? To sacrifice the child or the children to Molech. What, for what? For a title and position, for more money, for status. That, that's what that was about. And while the men is while the men is paying homage to Baal, cause they out there chasing skirts, wanting more money. See, it's all about more money. So yeah, the, see, see, Judah, see, see, the men of Judah, many of them, they will, they will work. Some of them won't. They'll just swindle. They'll swindle and connive and be thugging and gang banging and whatever it is they're doing to get the money. Because it's all about the money. But then they want the power. They want the power and control. And then they want the sex. So see, this is how the this is how the um the homes are broken up. This is how the homes are split up. Even in the even in the, the Judah tribe and the tribes of Israel, this is how the families of Judah and the families of Israel are split apart because the women are so concentrated on being more beautified, more beautiful and sexy, while the men are concentrating on getting money and having more sex and obtaining power. All right. So, so that's what happened. Asher repose, verse 16. And he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, because of the sins Jeroboam has committed and has caused Israel to commit. Now, you got to realize this. Judah 
Once Israel was split up, once Israel was split apart in 930 BC because of King Solomon and his 700 wives, 300 concubines and all of the idol worship and the pagan gods and goddesses and Judah and Israel too, because you got to realize something, a nation is only as good as the king that's in power and authority over the people. So now if the king, if the king that you have, if he's fornicating with pagan gods and he's in idolatry and he's a womanizer and he's a drunkard and he's, and, 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 and he is committed injustice against the people, the poor, the widow, and the fatherless, and he's taking bribes, all right? He's taking bribes for those who are so really, to, to, to get rid of those who are really innocent, but well, then you already know that the people, the people under the king will be just as demonic and just as wicked, and they will be just as lawless. They will be just as lawless. So, but that verse 16, and he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam. Because of the sins Jeroboam has committed and has caused Israel to commit. Now, after King Solomon, right now, the kingdom was split. But then one tribe, the Judah tribe, was given to um, Rehoboam. And then there was 10 tribes. The 10 tribes of Israel was given to Jeroboam. Because remember, y'all always said that I, I'm going to tear the kingdom out of Solomon's hands, but I won't do it during your lifetime. I won't do it during your lifetime, but it's going to because and then I'm going to and then I will always leave a lamp for Jerusalem because of your humble servant, because of my humble servant, your father, King David. So I, I will always leave a lamp in Jerusalem. All right. And so now what he so now a uh, real bone became the king of Judah. And Jeroboam became the king of northern Israel. Now, Yahuwah told Jeroboam that if you commit to my ways, then I will make you an empire and a dynasty just like I made for King David. But you see that Jeroboam, he did not do the right thing. See, Judah had wicked and righteous kings and Israel had all wicked kings. But now Jeroboam, Jeroboam became king and Jeroboam was, he was scared. He was frightened that the northern kingdom of Israel, who he was king over, would integrate back into Jerusalem and would and would go back to Judah and they would go to Jerusalem and worship. So Jeroboam said, oh, no, 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 no. It would be too much for y'all to go to Jerusalem and, 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 and go and worship Yahuwah. So here's what you do. Just worship here. Here, here's your two gods right here. Worship these gods right here because these are the gods that got you out of Egypt. These are the gods that delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now, what was Jeroboam talking about? Jeroboam was talking about two golden calves, the same golden calf that they were worshiping in Egypt that got 3,000 men struck down in the camp. Here come Jeroboam with these two golden calves. He set one up in Dan and set one up in Bethel. Many of them traveled all the way to Dan to worship these these gods, these pagan gods. See? So Jeroboam saying, oh, no, 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 don't, don't worship y'all. Well, here's your gods right here. Now, you must realize also that, um, that Jeroboam, Jeroboam, he was, he also, uh, Jeroboam was not, on, Jeroboam was a wicked king. So this is what really caused more of of Israel's decadence and immorality because Jeroboam never repented. Jeroboam never repented for nothing he did. You understand what I'm saying? So this is what caused uh, Israel to go into captivity because of the sins of Jeroboam. All right. Um, now let's go to first Kings. Let's go to first Kings. First Kings chapter 14, 22. Let's go to 22 and 24. Let's go to 22 and 24. Oh, and not only that, Jeroboam, Jeroboam, he installed any type of priest. You know, the Levitical priesthood, you know, they were the ones who administered the sacrifices and all of that. No, Jeroboam, he appointed any priest. He got priests from everywhere, from all these other nations and everything. And that is what got the Levitical priesthood uh, tainted and split apart because of Jeroboam. He got any, any priests. And this is the reason why the whole kingdom of Israel and Judah became so, so wicked and so, and so lawless. This is why. And so all the, so now, so now all the people are doing everything they want to do. The people are doing everything they want to do. There is no order. There's no justice. 
There's no peace. There's no obedience. Nothing. Nothing. Why? They build. Why? Because they building shrines. They building shrines for Baal. Building temples for Baal. Building Asherah poles. They pouring out drinks. Drink offerings for the queen of heaven, who is also Ishtar, Astarte, the mother moon goddess of fertility. See, they all the same gods, just different nations. They all the same gods and goddesses, just different pagan nations and different names. But they the same. They fall in the same pagan trinity. And Satan is all of them. I told y'all that because Satan is a male and female. So first Kings. Uh, this, now Judah sins. We, we talked about Israel sins, right? Israel, they built the Asherah pole. That's what got them sent into captivity by the Assyrians, right? That's what got the northern kingdom of Israel sent to Assyria by the Assyrians. Now, Judah sins. First Kings, verse 14. First Kings, uh, chapter 14, verse 22 to 24. Verse 22. Judah did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. By the sins they committed, they stirred up his jealous anger more than those who were before them had done. So what is he saying? Israel committed their sins, but then here come Judah, her sister. She committed more sins than Israel did. As a matter of fact, Yahuwah deemed Israel more righteous than Judah. Why? Because, see, it's one thing for one of your children to commit sins and do what is abominable and detestable to you, right? That's one thing. I got one hard-headed, rebellious, stiff-necked child. But then my other child, the one whom, the one whom I favor, the one who's supposed to be royal and holy, the one who I laid out a lamp for, you mean to tell me y'all going to follow in the same footsteps? You going to follow in the same footsteps as your brother and your sister? You're, you're doing more than, than your sister and your brother. You're doing more than she did. Because that's what happens. Because you got to realize something. See, with children, when children... They pattern after what they see. So if one sister, if one brother sees another brother or another sister do something, then the other brother or the other sister will try to top. They will try to top what the other brother and the other sister did. Whether good or bad. See, whether good or evil, righteous or unrighteous. So this is where Judah did more. Judah was even more unfaithful. She was even more wicked than Israel. Verse 23. They all, now, so verse 22 again. Judah did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. By the sins they committed, they stirred up his jealous anger more than those who were before them had done. Verse 23. They also set up for themselves high places. Now, wait a minute. There's, n there's none higher than the most high. So see, they was putting these gods on up. They were putting these gods up, up top, up high. In the spot, only where our Heavenly Father's supposed to reside. Only he's up high, but they were putting these gods up high. They were building them up high. So verse 23, they also set up for themselves high places, sacred stones, sacred stones. This is the reason why you are not, these stones are not for healing. Only Yahushua HaMashiach can heal you. See, people are trying to use the Bible and they're using these stones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel, like uh, uh, Onyx and and Sardis and and uh and sapphire. See, they're using these stones to say that these stones administer healing. They have healing properties. They ain't nothing but witchcraft. You're not supposed to be using anything other than the Ruach Akodesh, other than Yahweh's healing power. The blood. By his stripes we are healed. See what I'm saying? So you got these new agers and these healing these self-healing doctors and these self-enlightenment um partakers and and worshipers they are taking the scripture and they are using in the scripture what were symbolic to other things it were not in, uh, for other purposes and they're using stones and they're using all these other things to say that this is what's used for healing nah nah because you know what the 12 do you know what these stones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel are used for? They're really used as chakra stones. Because, see, this is how Satan is taking scripture and he's causing people that don't have no relationship with our Heavenly Father to follow Satan's ways by him perverting scripture and taking what 
is supposed to be symbolic for other purposes and use it for healing and use it for enlightenment and use it for all these other um for all these other practices of meditation and all of that. So don't get caught up into that, y'all. This is what they're doing. All right. Verse 23, they also set up for themselves high places, sacred stones and Asher repose on every high hill and under every spreading tree. So they set up Asher repose everywhere. They set up Asher repose on every high hill. So there was no hill where there wasn't an Asher repose, just like just about in every city, you got a, a strip club. See, come on. There's strip poles everywhere. See? Then, then they, they rely on Baal for the, for blessing. Now, the reason why they relied on Baal in the in ancient Israel, why was because of the rain for crops. See, now they, they relied on him because of rain, not realizing, not understanding that it's Baal don't control no weather. Baal don't control rain. The heavenly father controls rain. See, remember I told you that when you believe the lie, see the heavenly father will give you over to the delusions of your own mind and give you over to the strong delusion. So since they thought that Baal was making it rain for them, well then, okay, fine. I'm gonna let y'all get the blessing, but then after y'all's Baal worship, I'm gonna dry the land completely up. So the dry, the dried up land was a result of their Baal worship. So when there wasn't no rain, when the Heavenly Father closed up the sky and there wasn't no rain on the crops and their land dried up, that was because of Baal worship. See, but all the while, they thinking that Baal is the one that's making, that was making it rain. No, Baal wasn't making nothing rain. 23, they also set up for themselves high places, sacred stones and ashes repose on every high hill and under every spreading tree. Verse 24, there were even male shrine prostitutes. See, you got these cupcakes, these fruit cakes. They walking around naked with bikini briefs on for women to stuff $100 bills down their, their, down their bikini briefs. See, you got male strippers today. That's the bail system. Why? Because these... Honky, bulky men with tattoos are looking for money, power, and sex. That's the bail system. Oh, y'all don't y'all don't see that? That's what's happening today. Baal and Asherah has a spirit looming. Now, these are the sins of the two sisters. The sins of the two sisters, Israel and Judah. They have broken the covenant with their spiritual husband, Yahuwah. Verse 24, there were even male shrine prostitutes in the land. The people engaged in all the detestable practices of the nations Yahuwah had driven out before the Israelites. That's why he told them, when you go up in the land, be careful to not partake in any of their practices. Don't partake in any of them. That's why he had driven out all the nations before he moved Israel into the land. Because he said, I don't want you engaging. But what they do, they picked up the same practices that of the people of the nations he had driven out. He picked up the practices of the Sidonians, the Moabites, the Canaanites, the Ammonites, all of it. And that's the reason why Israel and Judah went into captivity. One by Assyria, Israel, and then Judah by the Babylonians. And this is why we're in our seventh captivity. See, don't get it twisted to think. See, what, see the reason why we're in our seventh captivity is a conglomeration of everything. Pagan worship unbelief, rebellion, stiff neckness, all of it, all of it. So this last captivity is because of everything that has happened. Now, part of this captivity has to do with generational curses. Uh, now see now, so many of our ancestors didn't see a lot of years in this captivity. Many of them died the moment they got over here through the transatlantic slave trade. Many of them died as soon as they hit American soil. Many of them died on the boat. Many of them jumped the ship and got eaten up by sharks because the sharks had to change their trajectory and their migration route because so much food was being dumped over there and jumped over there into the river, to the ocean. Because many was thrown over and many jumped over and said, no, we can't have this. And that's where you had a lot of diseases on the boat. People died of starvation on them ships. Our people being transported from West Africa over here to the shores of America, where we were Romanized and Catholicized and Christianized, right? Where we were baptized in the Roman Catholic Church and stripped of our land, culture, language, and, 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 our, and, our, and our belief and faith in our Heavenly Father and our heritage, everything, right? But wait a minute. But what got us sent over here? 
rebellion, idolatry, unbelief, didn't believe Mashiach. See, you, 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 y'all got to get this. Okay, so verse 23 again, they also set up for themselves high places, sacred stones, and ashen repose on every high hill and under every spreading tree. Verse 24, there were even male shrine prostitutes in the land. The people engaged in all the detestable practices of the nations Yahuwah had driven out before the Israelites. So what's the Baal and Asherah system? Is turn up, money, sex, Drinking, getting drunk, getting high, and turn up. That's the Baal and Asherah system. That's it. That's it. So if you are not worshiping our Heavenly Father, if you don't have a foundation in Mashiach, if your if your lives are not are not holy and righteous, you are automatically in the Baal and Asherah system. You were born in the Baal and Asherah system. Meaning if you were never born again, nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, you in the Baal and Asherah system. That's where it's leading you. The Baal and Asherah system has a conveyor belt that if you are not born again, it will roll you right on into this man of lawlessness, this anti-Mashiach, this anti-Mashiach this anti -Mashiach B system that's coming up. See, the Bell Asherah system is fraternities and sororities. The Bell Asherah system is turn up and galas and 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 uh cabarets and parties and clubs and strippers and prostitutes and whores and orgies. Cause that's what they had around the Asherah pole. They were having orgies. See, they couldn't slide down the Asherah pole made out of wood, so they had orgies around it. Just like they did around Molech after they sacrificed their child to Molech with the outstretched heated arms. They would put the baby on the outstretched heated arms of Molech, and then they would turn up, turn the drums up so they wouldn't hear the baby crying, and then everybody would be having orgies around Molech like they did the golden calf, like they did the golden calf back in Egypt. Come on, see? Like they did. And they was having orgies then too. Because that was what that was what the partying and the turn up and the celebration of these pagan gods, that's what it entailed. So it wasn't no party. It wasn't no turn up with these pagan gods without sex. Sex was involved, just like today. When there's a pool party and you got a whole bunch of men making money and, and, and then they got all the power at their jobs and what's going on there at that pool party? What's going on there? Sex. Orgies, swingers clubs, you know that. See, okay. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter three, verses six through 10. Let's go there. Let's go there. Jeremiah chapter three, verses six through 10. But y'all get what I'm saying. This is the problem we have. This is the problem, Judah. This is the problem, Israel. This, this is y'all's problem. This is our problem. This is our problem. And here's the thing. We know Baal and Asherah as they were in terms of um, statues. They don't have them today as much as it is in people's hearts. They still have statues and things around now. Like they got the Baphomet. They have the Baphomet statue, I believe, in one of those states where I think it's in Colorado, Arizona. LA. It's in one of those states where they got the they got the bail. They, 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 they have the transgender goat. See, that's another form of bail worship. But now it's not so much the statues like it was then. Not saying that there aren't statues today that people are worshiping and marveling around, but now the Baal and spirit, the Baal and Asherah spirit is in people's hearts today because now it's the money. Now it's, now it's the cause. Now it's people's tech, it's people's tech, technological devices. Now that people are, it's people's jewelry. See, remember what, remember what scripture talked about the daughters of Zion. They walk around haughty with outstretched necks. See, he, what the heavenly father said, he said, I'm going to tear off your headdresses and your crescent necklaces, all your anklets and bracelets and all of that. I'm going to tear it all off. You know, you were smelling, you were smelling mighty good at first, but then I'm going to give you a stench. Why? Because the daughters of Zion are haughty. See, you had hair flowing, but it's going to be bald. 
You're going to have bald heads now. Well, that's what's happening. And that's the reason why. Come on. See? You got bald heads today now. Why? Because the curses. He, this is what he said he would do to the daughters of Zion. And the, and the, the men too. And so now the men, they're having all these sexual problems and demons and all, all of they have problems be, getting drunk and all that. Well, what was wrong with Israel? I told y'all Israel were drunkards. Israel, all the kings, the judges, the, the officials, all those people who were supposed to administer righteousness and justice and uphold the law of Yahuwah, these people were drunkards. They were, they were sexually immoral. They would turn up kings and queens just like the day. Just like the day. It's no different. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 6 through 10. See, these sorority, I told you, these sororities and fraternities, see, Freemasonry, what, what is that? That's sexual worship. What you think the compass in the square is? See, the compass represents the male organ and the square represents the female. That's the coming together of the two sexual unions, while the G in the middle represents the great architect of the universe. What is that? That's Lucifer. They ain't got nothing to do with our heavenly father, Elohim, Yahuwah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the sexual union with the sexual spirit. You got to realize these higher ups, they worship Baal and Asherah through Freemasonry. And so this is how they worship this Lucifer God, this Gnostic God, meaning do what you want to do. Doesn't matter. Man is good and he's evil. So it doesn't matter. But man's goodness is going to supersede and overtake his evil nature. So mean and man can do whatever he want, live how he want, because in the end, you know, it's going to be based on good works. And this is what these Freemasons are looking at. Yahuwah pardoning, pardoning their evil for their good works. And they're going to be sent slammed to hell. Is this what it is? Because all this time you was worshiping Lucifer, the God of this world, Satan. That's who he was worshiping. See, get money, get money. Because your business is making millions and you flourishing, you get money. And you already know there's a woman somewhere. There's a concubine hidden somewhere. Somewhere. There's some DMing going on. There's some down lowing. There's something. Something's happening. Because men, men, these Judah men don't know how to make money and stay, and, 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 and stay with just one woman at home. No. No. See, because cause see, for Judah... Money goes right along with the sex, goes right along with the power, goes right along with the alcohol, goes right along with the drugs, goes right along with the turn up, goes right along with the turn up. See, so trust me, man making all that money and he got the mindset of the bail system. You ain't the only one. I'm, I'm telling you right now, you ain't the only one. He got something on the side that he relies on that's worshiping Asherah. See, because Baal needs Asherah to come together. So if a man is influenced by the Baal system and the Baal spirit, then he's going to need him a woman that is focused on being a part of the Asherah spirit by her magnifying and glorifying her beauty and her sexuality. So this is where you know the Baal and Asherah spirit got to come together under this system of Baal and Asherah and all of the decadence and all of the, um, the corporations and all of the celebrations and everything that is incorporated into the Baal and the Asherah system. All right, let, 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 let's go on. Let's go on. See, pornography. What's that? What is that? Baal and Asherah spirit. That's what that is. See, you see? So... Don't you see the wide gate and the broad road if you don't have a have if you don't have a relationship with our Heavenly Father? If you don't have a relationship with Yah, you in you already incorporated in the system. And if you ain't been turned out already, if you have not engaged and indulged yourself in all that Baal and Asherah has to offer, eventually you will. Because the spirit is too intense and too strong to not pull you in. It's going to pull you in. If it don't get you today, it's going to get you tomorrow. If it don't get you to next week, it's going to get you next month. If it don't get you next month, it's going to get you next year. It's going to get you if you ain't been born again. Why? Because your flesh is on a million. Your flesh always wants more. So your flesh is always going to be dictating and directing you and misguiding you and misdirecting you based upon your own sexual cues and your voracious appetite for money and power and the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and, and the pride of life. 
it, you can't help it. Why? Because the flesh. So it doesn't matter who you are, especially Judah and Israel. All right, Jer Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter three, verse six through 10. If a man divorces his wife and she leaves him and marries another man, should he return to her again? No. Well, we know in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses one, I believe, in Deuteronomy chapter 24, we know that if a man marries a woman, right, and the woman and the woman leaves the man or the man leaves the woman and then the woman goes and marries another man and then that man leaves that woman and that woman comes back to the man to form a husband, that's an unclean marriage. Come on, that's unclean. So if a man divorces his wife and she leaves him and marries another man and tries to come back, it's unclean. That's 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 unlawful. Would not the land be completely defiled? Yes, the land would be completely defiled. But you have lived as a prostitute. This is what Yahuwah is saying. That's just like what y'all did to me. Right? I divorced you because I gave you your certificate of divorce. But now, if, if we were talking about a physical carnal marriage, the same process that is going to take for you to come back to me, it would be deemed unclean if you did that in the physical See, so that means that although you messed up in this marriage, although you break, although you broke our covenant, come on, Yahuwah is saying to Israel and Judah, although you broke my covenant, meaning that if you come back to me, you will be cleaned up. All right. If a man divorces his wife and she leaves him and marries another man, should he return to her again? Would not the land be completely defiled? Yes. But you have lived as a prostitute with many lovers. Come on. Judah, she has, she lived, she has lived as a prostitute with her many lovers. Who are the lovers? The queen of heaven, Molech, Baal, Asherah, Ashtoreth, all these pagan gods. The same ones incorporated in today's society. It didn't change. It, it just became modernized. That's all. It never changed, became modernized. In fact, it's worse than it was then. It's worse now because now you got technology to go along with it. You got video cameras and you got all kinds of tech, technological advances and you have all of this stuff, right? You have all of these, of these, these different, you have these cars with all of these, uh, these technological components and devices and things in the vehicles now. And so everybody, everybody's on fleet now. Everybody's turned up. Everybody keeping up with the Joneses because see, that's Judah's problem. See, Judah just cares about, let me tell you what Judah and Israel cares about together, collectively. Judah, Judah and Israel are consumers. Judah loves to eat and consume and drink and smoke and pop and snort and dance and twerk. And that's what, see, that's what Judah loves to do. That's why I said if Judah would just turn back to the most high and stop sinning, man, the American economy would go under overnight. Bam, boom, financial collapse automatically. Do you see? So then, but this is the reason why the Heavenly Father has to allow the financial system to collapse through these elites and these higher ups, because he already know that Judah ain't going to come out. Judah ain't going to come out of sin. Israel ain't going to come out of sin. So that means that our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, has to force Judah and Israel out of sin by heating up. So that means that ain't going to be no more turn up. Ain't going to be no more eating and drinking and smoking and popping and snorting and sliding down the pole and sexing. And ain't going to be no more of that. You it's just going to be dried up. But the Heavenly Father's going to have to cause that in order for Judah and Israel to hear. Because it's going to be time to turn the hearts back, turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers. And the only way that can happen is he got to cause stuff to dry up. That means that Baal ain't going to be making it rain no more. And then you're going to really start to see the real climate. You're going to start to see ain't no more blessing. Ain't going to be no more Benzes and Roses and, and, and Bugattis and Lamborghinis and Benzes and Lexuses and all of this stuff that these Freemason pastors worshiping Baal and Asherah on the pulpit keep preaching to people to go back out in the system to worship Baal and Asherah. Ain't going to be none of that. Ain't going to be none of that. No, ain't going to be none of that, Cletus. All right. Okay, now. He says, but you have lived as a prostitute with many lovers, yet return to me, says Yahuwah. So he's even saying, you've done all of these things. You've divorced. I've, I've given you. I've divorced you. You went to go marry your lovers. And I'm saying, come back to me, though. 
out of all of what you're doing, come back. Come back. Because what you're doing is really driving you deeper down into destruction. See? What you're doing ain't going to get you no blessing. It's the illusion of blessing. Only I can bless you. So you headed down the wrong road going where you're going. It's just like us, our people. They keep flying around the world going to going to Turks and Caicos. They going to Montego Bay. They flying all over the world. They flying to Hawaii every other week. They go. And I'm saying, man, y'all don't know that y'all don't know plagues. Plagues are coming all over the world. The Heavenly Father's dropping the plagues of Egypt. And y'all going out here turning up on the boat. Man, you might turn up on the boat dead. See? That's what I'm saying. Nobody's seeing the warning signs. They don't even know. Y'all got hundreds. Y'all throwing hundreds up now. You ain't going to be able to throw no hundreds up in a while because you're going to be chipped up. You ain't going to be able to throw the chips up. You ain't going to be able to do that. So y'all throwing $100 bills and 50s and stuffing them down drawers and all of that, down bras and all that. Oh, no, ain't going to be none of that. If you want to continue to do that, you're going to have to take the chip and then you won't have salvation. You would have forfeited your salvation then. So the Heavenly Father saying, listen, either you choose me or I'm going to give you over to the delusion of the bell system, which is what the new bell system that's coming. They promising you a utopian world of no pain and no and, and, and no harm, no headache, all peace and, and your and prosperity and you'll flourish. But that's going to be a lie. And then you'll be a robot and you can't die. That's why the Heavenly Father. That's why when he dropped them, when them seven trumpets happened. And them three woes happen and them locusts come up after the after the, uh, the, the the fifth trumpet, the first woe and them locusts come out out of the bottomless pit. And start stinging men for five months and men will want to die, but death will elude them. Well, that's because they will be chipped up and they will be robots and they will be half human and have technology and they won't want to die. But you won't die, Bubba. Now turn up. See, now turn up. See, would the, would the Bible be written by the white man then? Would Yahoo would just be a myth and a fairy tale then? Huh? No, because you're going to be begging them. You're going to be begging them then. All right. Verse two, verse two, listen, look upon to the barren heights and see. He said, look upon to the barren heights and see. Is there any place where you have not been ravished? So Yahuwah is saying, look up, look up where you put your pagan gods and goddesses, your pagan deities. Look up. Is there any of these places where you were not ravished? Is there any of these places where you did not prostitute and exploit yourselves for money? Is there a place that you did not turn up? Is there a place that you did not sacrifice for Baal and Asherah and Molech and, and Shamash? And is there a place that you kept my commandments? Look up to the barren heights and see, is there any place where you have not been ravished? By the roadside, you sat waiting for your lovers. Ain't that what Judah does? Ain't that what Judah does? Isn't that what Judah and Israel does? Isn't that what they do? They sit and wait. They, I told you they sit and wait for their oppressors to pass by to give them something. To give them a compliment, to give them some money, to give them some drugs, to give them something so that they can finally unleash their wildest fantasies. This is what they're doing. They sit by the roadside and wait for their lovers. I'm going to wait for my pagan gods and pagan idols. I'm going to sit and wait. Because that's what Judah and Israel does. And that's the reason why I keep trying to tell y'all, ain't going to be no reparations. And if they do, I told you they're going to be taking it from you because they'll turn the system right over. So if you want your reparations, go ahead and get the chip. If you want that. Because that's what you're going to get. Ain't going to be no $100 bills and stacks of money. So what? Why? So Judah and Israel can turn up more? Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Cause how, because now the ideal, the ideal way would be to get reparations and to come together and build. Well, wait a minute. If we're already apart and we're already crabs in the barrel now, see, before Heavenly Father can bless you, before he can bless a whole nation, they got to already be together in him. Then he can pour out the blessing. But y'all already apart. 
So if I give y'all idiots money, y'all gonna be further apart. Not only will you be further apart from yourselves, you gonna be further apart from me. I'm not gonna give you no reparation. I ain't gonna give you no reparation. So y'all can further kill each other, further dig deeper into drugs and alcohol and prostitution. And I mean, y'all got to be crazy. So y'all can still further be killing people over Jordans and Thames and all the stuff that your oppressor put out there for you to wear. All the stuff that your oppressor put out there for you to eat. You'll be fighting and stabbing over crab legs and shrimp and chicken sandwiches and fish. Man, y'all. Okay, verse two. This is Jeremiah chapter three. Verses two. Jeremiah chapter three, verses two. Look up to the barren heights and see. Is there any place where you have not been ravished? By the roadside, you sat waiting for your lovers. Sat, you sat there waiting for your pagan gods. Sat there waiting for those who administered the pagan gods. You sat like a nomad in the desert. A nomad, meaning you wandering. You a wanderer. You a vagabond. You looking for somewhere to go. You a nomad. You ain't got no place to go. You just wandering and looking. And that's what our people doing too. They nomads. They looking. They wandering and looking, trying to find something. Okay, is it going to be a statue today? Is it going to be a, 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 a talisman tomorrow? What about a charm? What about a chain? What about a bracelet? What about an earring? What about an anklet? I tell you what, what about chakra stones? We need something. What about a yoga mat? Something, a crystal ball, crystals, chicken feet, bells. What do we need? We need something. Because that, that, that's, see, that's what Judah want. Judah don't want the Ruach. See, Judah needs something. That, Judah needs something it can see. Israel needs something they can see. You, you understand what I'm saying? Burning candles, lighting up candles like they have to do at the altar. See, at these fraternities, when you get incorporated into these fraternities and sororities, you have to kneel at the altar. You got to, that, that's, now that's what they were doing then. They were building altars for Baal and Asherah, building altars for, for all these pagan deities. Well, that's what you have to do today in these fraternities and sororities. They got you light a candle up, then you have a, an altar, a rule book with all the rituals and everything, and then you have to chant and you have to say things over these, over these rituals. You got to recite these rituals and pay homage to whoever is the founder of these fraternities and sororities. So it's none other than you paying homage to those who have forsaken our Heavenly Father for Baal and Asherah. It's the same thing. See? Burning sage, trying to ward off demons, but you're inviting more. That's our people. Our people just need to be so spiritual. Our people need to be so spiritual. You know, and, and, and like I'm saying, y'all going back to the calendar. I'm telling y'all, the Heavenly Father's not telling people to go back to the calendar. Why? Because you're going to stumble right on into worshiping the stars and the moon and the sun. And that's astrology. So he's not telling you to do that. That's why you have the Ruach. If you just go by the Ruach and live right, why everybody trying to do everything except live right? Just live right. Just live right. Live right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. See? Just, just live right. Because you could be on the Hebrew calendar and still be living wrong. What difference do it make? You making money. You gotta. You have doctor's appointments for your children. Because many of y'all having children doing this. I mean, you know, our Heavenly Father take care of you. But this is a tumultuous time to be raising children. But when you raise, when you have to take children to the doctor's appointments and take them to the dentist and you taking them, you taking them to the doctor's and the dentist appointment on the Gregorian calendar. When you make your money, you making money, you making the Benjamins baby from the Gregorian calendar. When you go to work, Gregorian calendar, it don't make no difference what calendar it is. Just live right. The Heavenly Father knows what's messed up and all of that. He's just saying, listen, live holy, live righteous, obey me, follow me, follow the spirit. That's why he said, if you follow the spirit, if you are following the Ruach, you're not under the law. That's why he said that. Follow the Ruach. That's why he gave you the Ruach. So if you follow the Ruach, if you, if you, if you do not gratify the desires of the flesh, then you are not under the law. But the moment that you start sinning, you become back up under the law again. Please, y'all got to get me. Get what I'm saying. That's why he gave you that. That's why the Ruach, that's the better promise. That's the higher level of communication. Because he said all this other stuff, you going, all this, doing all this other stuff, you going to slip into a religion. You going to slip into Satan, all this other stuff. Because Satan has perverted so much. He's perverted the calendar. He's perverted all the stuff that you're doing. 
So now if you get back into that and you're making that your, your, your catalyst for living right, you're going to stumble. But if you just live right, the fruits of the spirit, right? If you just develop the fruits of the spirit, operate off the fruits, boom. For such things, you are not under the law. Now, in the fruits of the spirit, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 25, did it say anything about a calendar? Just come on, y'all. Pray about it. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. Just pray about it. He said the fruits of the spirit, right? Does it say anything about a calendar, the sun and the moon and the stars? Did it say anything about the 12 stones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel? Did he say anything about the feast days? And we're not down in the feast days. We love the feast days, but we have a better promise now. But now is that incorporated in the fruits of the spirit? No, no, no. That's why he, he made it simple. So if you just follow the fruits, you're not under the law, but they want to be under the law. Okay, well, keep the whole law. If you don't keep the whole law, your sins are piling up, baby. And you went, all right, let me keep going. Let me keep going. I don't want to worry nobody. I, I, I just want to, I just, I, but I, I, I want y'all to pray. Pray about it. Don't listen to me. Pray about it. Do your research. Follow the spirit. What's spirit telling you? Right? You know. Um. So, verse two. Look up to the barren heights and see. Is there any place where you have not been ravished? Is there, is there any place, Judah and Israel, is there any place that y'all have not been tampered with? Any place that y'all have not been ravished and rummaged through and passed around and passed over, right? Because that's what's wrong with our people now. We That's why we got so much trauma. That's why we so depressed. That's why we so suicidal. That's the reason why we so, that, that, that's the reason why we so anxious and on edge, right? Why? Because we've been ravished. We've allowed these people this paganism, this Baal and Asherah system to ravage us. See, we have allowed this system to dictate what we, what we need to and should do. When we got a whole scripture, when we got a whole book, y'all's word to tell us what we need to do, what we should be doing. And we sitting there waiting for oppressors and our lovers. See, we love them, but they hate us. That's why, see, but the Heavenly Father said that these pagan gods, these, these deities, they your lovers. They our lovers, but we are not their lovers. They hate us and we love them. They hate us, but we love them so much. Heavenly Father, open arms. I love you. I love you. That's why I gave you my laws. That's why I gave you my commandments is I love you. Because I know if you don't follow my ways, you're going to be open for, the, for Satan to attack your behind. I know that. So this is the reason why I gave you I gave you laws. I gave you commandments. I gave you commandments. I didn't give you commandments to, to make your life boring and to make your life hell and to, and to take away your freedom. I gave you my commandments so you can be free. And I even, I even sweetened the deal up for you. I said, no longer will a man turn to his neighbor and ask about Yahuwah because guess what? No longer will the children's teeth be set on edge because of the fathers. I'm going to put, I'm going to do something better. I'm going to put my laws in your mind and write them in your heart. So guess what? Ah, y'all ain't ready for this. I, I, so, so I'm gonna I'm I'm do a better thing. I'm gonna do a new thing. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a better promise. So now ain't gonna be no excuse. Get, just get the spirit. Just get the spirit. That's all. And live right. That's it. That's it. Don't you ain't gotta do all of that other stuff. Live right. Live righteous. Live righteous. Live righteous. Twenty four seven three six five. Doesn't matter. His time. Is all the time, every time. Heavenly Father operates outside of time. That's the reason why he got all the time in the world. That's the reason why you should not let this system dictate to you what you should have at what age. See, we running through life trying to acquire everything, sinning in the process to get it. You, they, you, you let the system tell you, by 20, you need to have your college education. By 22, you need to have your house. By 23, you need to have your husband and your wife. By 24, you need to have four cars. By, and we rushing through life, and we are sacrificing to the system of Baal and Asherah, and we don't even realize that. 
that, wait a minute, Satan's about rushing. The Heavenly Father's about taking your time. He's about learning. He's about process. He's about order. So now if you follow his way, where you where guess what? You gonna get everything that's meant for you anyway, because it's according to his will and not yours. But no. Judah got to have it today, right now, and Judah will knock everybody out the way, even their own mother, father, brother, sister, cousin, uncle, aunt, just to get it. They'll knock them out, knock them over. But that's your brother. That you, they, See, you're going to need the same one you're knocking over now for a million dollars. You're going to need him in the end, because in the end, baby, ain't going to be no million dollars, ain't going to be no cars, ain't going to be no houses, ain't going to be nothing but the wilderness. So why you knock your brother out when you're going to need him later? See, and that's the reason why the Heavenly Father's going to heat this stuff up. Why are you hating on your sister for her six-inch heels that she can barely even walk in? Why are you hating on her with that fake hair in her head? Why are you hating on her with them big, long ashes so long that a bird can doo-doo on them? Why are you so mad at her because she got them big lips that she souped up, big, big breasts, big butt, small hips, small waist? Why are you mad at her? She's manufactured. By doctors and scientists. Why are you mad at her? Why are you mad at her? Because her Instagram is piked up and hyped up by people who don't love her. But she loved them. Why, why are you mad at that? Daughters of Zion? Why? Why are you mad at your brother? Why are you mad at your brother? Why are you mad at your brother? Because he got a Hemi engine. A 6.7 Hemi. That brother still, that brother, that brother got baby mothers all over the place. Why are you mad at him? See? Yeah, he got yeah, he got two cars, but he ain't got nowhere to stay. He got one car at his baby mother house, then he got another car at his concubine house, and he running around chasing skirts. Money, sex, and power. But he ain't got no home. Y'all better get this see. But you hating on your brother because of what he got. You don't even know his situation. You don't even know he's sinning to get it. You don't even know that he done sold out to the bell system to get everything he got. Why? Rushing. Rushing through life. Rushing. Russian, you let the system of bail tell you what you need to do, when you need to do it, how you need to do it, with whom you need to do it with. And that's the reason why you so discombobulated. This is the reason why you so messed up. This is the reason why you so indecisive. This is the reason why you so double-minded. This is the reason why you so toe up from the flow up. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm telling you tonight. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Better get your mind right. Better get that. I told y'all. Get that hate out your heart too. White folk, black folk, Korean folk, Chinese folk, Japanese folk, Spanish folk, whoever folk. Better get that hate out your heart. Get that hate out your heart. That hate out your heart is going to mess you up. Going to do you in. Because this very thing, because you got to realize something. The same things that you hate, the Heavenly Father is going to put it in your face when things dry up. Oh, you hate that person? I'm going to put them right before you. And that's going to be your test. Oh, please. Do you get that? Whatever your issue is, it's going to be put right before you before it's all over with. See? Because the Heavenly Father don't want nothing in this kingdom that could not conquer what he gave you the authority to have victory over. So he is not going to allow you. Uh, all right. See, this is, this is Ruach. This is Ruach talking ruach teaching because see this ain't just doing going through the motions and the works to try to get the heavenly father to show no no this is just living right this is it's more see it's more staying away from things than engaging in things y'all hear me living righteous is more staying away from stuff than it is engaging the more stuff you engage in the more opportunities you have for satan to run into you or you to run into satan for you to do something else and get something else and to cling on and cling on to something else just start just see so living righteous is dropping stuff living righteous is regressing not 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 going back to your old but it's like moving away from those who are toxic it's backing away from that it's turned down right that's the ruach the ruach is turned down living righteous is 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 is, is trimming trimming my call list my call log it's, it's shutting down folk. It's doing without some stuff. That, that's the righteousness. That's the holiness about it. It's not adding. It's not adding stuff. See, it's sanctification. It's consecration. It's consecration. Holiness. Right? 
Holiness. Holiness. All holy, holiness. Consecration. But what's that? Set apart. That's all. Being set apart from your counterparts. Set apart from your counterparts. That's all. That's all it is. That's that, it's simple. Ain't no they don't says asking me, can I help you to live right? How can what what pointers can I give you? I can give you the pointers. See, the problem is not the see, you know what you need to do. The, the question is, are you willing to do it? See, we're looking for an easy way out. That's the reason why we keep asking for help. We know what we need to do. Just go ahead and do it. Now, now, so really the problem is you just need help to do what you really don't want to do. <laughs> That's what it is. You need help doing what you really don't want to do. You need help giving up what you don't really want to relinquish over. You need help putting to death, right, what you want to keep alive. You need help putting to death what you want to keep alive. That's what you need. That's, so, 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 so just ask the heavenly father, can you help me? He already gave, and then he gave you a helper. Then he gave you a helper. So it ain't no sense of asking him for the help. He gave you a helper, right? He gave you a helper. And I would more so, because sometimes I'd be asking for help too. So it's really more so asking, asking the heavenly father to give you discernment, to give you discernment. So that you won't have to keep asking for so much help because you really got the help. But are you listening to the help that you have? Are you listening? That's the problem. You ain't listening to the help. You got the help, but you ain't listening because you drown out the help's voice by Cardi B and the Megan Thee Stallion and Jay-Z and Lil Wayne. See, you turn their voices up. The Ruach telling you something, you turn their voice up louder. And that's the reason why. And then, and then, and then when you, and then when you keep going through this 360 degree deadly circle and cycle of nothingness and and suicidal thoughts and blackouts and hangovers and all of that, then you, then you asking, well, what do I need to do? Can you help me? Well, no, you you already know what to do. All right. Verse two again. Look up to the burn heights and see. Is there any place where you have not been ravished? By the roadside, you sat waiting for lovers, sat like a nomad in the desert. You have defiled the land with your prostitution and wickedness. So see, Judah has defiled the land by her prostitution and wickedness. Israel and Judah. But we talking about Judah because Jeremiah was talking to Judah. See, so we have defiled the land because of prostitution and wickedness. Wherever you are, you have you have defiled. Wherever you are because of prostitution and wickedness, you prostituted yourself for sex, for money, for love, for whatever, but you prostituted yourself over, meaning you had to sell out. Many you had to sign the deal. Many you had to sign the contract, right? On the dotted line or in your heart or both and both. So you had to do that. You had to do both. So you have defiled the land with your prostitution and your wickedness. This is what has happened. Verse three, therefore, the showers have been withheld. Listen, listen, therefore, the showers have been withheld and no spring rains have fallen. Remember, I told you what was the punishment for worshiping Baal? What's the punishment? He will shut the sky up. There'll be no rains. But they, but hold up. Y'all, did, didn't y'all rely on Baal to make it rain? To, so the system is making it rain but not making it rain water on crops like the heavenly father made it rain back in ancient Israel, who ancient Israel and Judah was relying on Baal to make it rain on the crops. Nah, the making it rain today in the Baal system is make it rain money, make it, make it rain position, make it rain prominent, a prominent position of power, making it rain opportunities of the world, making it rain money. That, where you think they get it from when they say, I'm going to make it rain in the strip club. I'm going to make it rain. Where you think they get that from? They get that from Bell. Bell was making it rain, but making it rain what? Making it rain money, power, sex, influence, culture, styles, designer, fashion, making it rain. 
Now, so now when is so now when Judah and Israel relied on Baal to make it rain, then the heavenly father in turn would cause their land to dry up. And this is where the famines came in. Why do you think there's going to be famine? Cause the heavenly father going to dry up. He's going to dry up everything. See, we sitting here thinking it's Bill and all of these other people, which it is, but the heavenly father's just allowing it to happen. See, the heavenly father, he doesn't party. He doesn't see the heavenly father. Oh, oh, see, let you got to realize something. Heavenly, there, there's no darkness in him. So he just, he'll just sit back and allow the darkness to take root, but it'll be a part of his plan. So he's just allowing stuff to happen. Meaning he's allowing the bail system. He's allowing the God of this world, Satan, to use his people who's in covenant with him, who has his spirit to do his bidding and to allow things to dry up, to allow financial collapse, to allow hyperinflation, to allow famine, allow plagues and diseases. You see that? So this is the Heavenly Father's allowing that stuff to happen. Okay, here it is. Bam. Here it is. Oh, y'all don't want to listen? All right, fine. Because guess what? All you really doing is you leaving, you leaving our Heavenly Father like this. Heavenly Father sitting back. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, fornication. Oh, you ain't going to stop? Okay. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, turn up. And you say you going to keep on sinning? Fine. Doom, 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 doom. All right. And so he's just allowing people to do what they want to do. But then when you do what you want to do, there's consequences and ramifications for doing what you want to do. Meaning you're out of his protection. Meaning that Satan has a legal right to come in and attack you. Right? Satan got a legal right. Because you playing with him. So Heavenly Father sit back and just allow everything that's going to happen to affect you. And you see why you are, un you see why you can't, do you see why as a believer, you can't be equally yoked with unbelievers? Why? Because they got a judgment coming that if you don't want the judgment that's coming on them, don't be around them. They got a judgment, but see, you want to be around them. Why? Because they eating good. They eating crabs and shrimp and steak and lobsters. They got them cookouts and they have barbecues and they got women and money and all of that. But you don't realize that's Baal doing that for them. You don't realize that. So that's that's what's keeping you wanting, wanting to be with them. But you got to realize they don't have the Heavenly Father in mind at no time of day whatsoever. So that means that they are left unprotected in the bail system and bail blessing them and they got judgment. So meaning that if you connected with these jokers, you going to be caught up in the same judgment they going to get. Right. That's what I say. Don't get caught up in what you see. But Judah is so caught up in what she sees that she see she don't want to miss out on nothing. Judah don't want to miss out on no fun. Judah don't want to miss out on no sex. Judah don't want to miss out on none of that stuff that they got going on over there. Judah don't want to do that. So what Judah does, Judah comes together and they all be sinning together. They all be prostituting themselves together. They all be fornicating together. They all be, see, Talking about you holy and righteous one minute and then you cussing up a storm the next. Come on, y'all. You know? And we talking about just letting it fly out your mouth like it's nothing. Like a heathen, like a hood rat. That, see, that type of stuff. That, that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. And I'm talking about directly after you finish quoting scripture on the next live, you cussing. It's like night and day. Like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you just, are you mother effer, you be? And then the next one, you saying, um, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not. Get you. Stop it. Stop it. Right? We ain't talking about a cuss word came out because you was mad. And you say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me and all that. And you knew that was wrong conviction. We ain't talking about that. We talking about you coming on and parading. You parading your, your, your profanity is what you doing. Because you think you could get your point across better if you use the B word, the F word, and the S word. No, you can't. No, you can't. Getting your point across to who? Heavenly Father? No. No. Mm -mm. That don't sound good to his ears. See that? Okay. All right, look. Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 3. 
Therefore, the showers have been withheld and no spring rains have fallen. He dried up the land. Yet you have the brazen. You have the brazen look of a prostitute. Now, brazen, that means unembarrassed. You a prostitute and you ain't even ashamed. Well, that's Judah. Judah's a prostitute and she ain't even ashamed of her wickedness. She ain't even ashamed of her lawlessness. She's not even ashamed of her demonic activity. She's not even ashamed of her impurities. She's not ashamed. She going to do what she want to do. See? Yet you have a brazen look of a prostitute. You refuse to blush with shame. You refuse to get on your face and repent. You refuse. You refuse to be convicted. You refuse. Verse four, have you not just called to me? Didn't you just, didn't you just call to me for a promotion? Didn't you just call to me for a new car? Foolishness. But didn't you just call to me to heal you? Didn't you just call to me for deliverance? Have you not just called to me? My father, my friend, my youth. We five show find a friend in Jesus. And, and we already know the deal behind Jesus. We know that. See, that's the reason why Jesus is connected to the bail system. That's the reason why, yeah, Jesus is blessing them for doing what they want to do. They don't even realize they worship in Baal. Because Jesus is not the Hebrew Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. They worship in a European God. See, Jesus is the European Messiah. Y'all better learn. Y'all better get this. Jesus belongs to the Roman Catholic Church and Christianity. That's, those, that's the Europeans Messiah. But then the Hebrew Messiah, Yahushua Mashiach, whole different story. Whole different story. Whole different story. Let me say this. Let me say this. Jesus is the God of white supremacy. Let me say, let me, let me, let me say that because you have some European brothers and sisters don't want nothing to do with lawless Freemason Jesus. They don't want nothing to do with him. So we white supremacy. Let's use that. Right. See, this is how you know. Come on. But they don't, they refuse to see the difference and the distinction. Why? Because they want to stay on milk. They want to stay on, mm, it tastes good, praise and worship, hallelujah, Jesus, 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 thank you, Jesus. So they want to stay on that. So because they want to stay on that, they'll never see that they're worshiping the God of wood and stone. They'll never see that. You see, Jesus of wood, the cross, the Christian cross of wood, and then the copper stone, Islam. See, they don't want to see that. Both religions of Roman Catholicism, they don't want to see it. That's why many of our brothers and sisters never went to white Jesus. They just went on ahead and they went to Muhammad. They went to Allah. They Why? Because they felt like, they knew, well, guess what? I don't know what's happening. I don't know what, I don't know what my salvation looks like and what it entails and what it symbolizes, but I know surely didn't know white God come and save me, so I'm going to Islam. But really, our brothers and sisters being blind with the wool of religion over their eyes, they don't realize that you still worshiping two daughters, two daughters of Judaism, is uh, Christianity and Islam, and so they both belong to Roman Catholicism. Our people don't see that. But Hold up. It all goes to the paganism. So you see Judah and Israel is in pagan in pagan worship today like our ancestors were back then. So they we're worshiping this. Our people are worshiping the same gods and goddesses because who you think Jesus is? Jesus is Baal. Who you think Mother Mary is? Mother Mary is Asherah. Mother Mary got the sexual spirit on her, but they call her a virgin. Just like Artemis, they say she's a virgin. She's a goddess of, 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 of virginity, right? Of chastity. But then she's also a goddess of childbirth. Now, how can now how insane? How how much hypocrisy can you be in? See? Hold up. How could you be a goddess of childbirth, but then a goddess of chastity, virginity? Make up your mind. And then Artemis, then when the baby was born, they would kill the baby. That's Artemis worship. Birthday. Birthday Artemis, the Greek goddess of chastity, wild animals and hunt. Same thing today. Same thing today. And remember, Paul, Paul popped up. And Demetrius, it was like, man, wait a minute. Demetrius, the silversmith, go to the book of Acts. If you go there, Demetrius, they was, Demetrius said, wait a minute. You know we make a good business. We got a good business. 
See, just like today in the bail system in the churches, what are the pastors saying? We make a good business. Well, that's what Demetrius was saying, the silversmith. We make a good business. You know, we make a good business by making these Artemis shrines. And Paul coming in here messing up the business because Paul wanting to teach salvation and teach the real way, the true, holy, and righteous way to salvation, Yahushua, and messing up business for Demetrius selling Artemis shrines. Well, that's the same thing in assembly. They, 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 they selling. And so when you get a guest preacher to come in there that's really going to hit with the fire, nah, he bad for business. You know we make a good business off of selling books and selling holy water and oils, and you know we make a good business off of that. Selling beads, selling rosary beads with the cross hooked up to it in a book marker in the bookstore. You know, we make a good business. And then we get this, we get somebody like Paul, we get a Jeremiah coming in here, we get an Isaiah coming in here preaching, and they messing up the business. They messing up the business. So, um, um, verse four. Have you not just called to me, my father, my friend, my youth? Because that's what Judah does. After they finish sin and all they sin, aren't you my father, my friend? Can you help me? I know I just keep on sinning because I feel like it and I want to have sex with as many people as I want to and spend up all the money on anything I want to buy and I want to drive anything I want to drive and I want to do what I want to do. But you're my friend. Can you help me? Can, 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 can you not give me a bad doctor's report and have AIDS and HIV showing up on my doctor's report? Can you help me? Can, can, I, 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 know, I know I'm rotten and dirty and I'm lawless and rebellious and stiff neck, but, but, but can you please help me not lose my house? Can, can you help my children? You see that? Verse five, will you always be angry? Will your wrath continue forever? This is how you talk. The, 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 the Heavenly Father, y'all always said, this is how you talk. But you do all the evil you can. You, you see? Will you always be mad at me, God? Will your wrath continue forever, God? Can, can you please help me, God? Can you please help my mother, my father, God? Can you please help my children, God? This is how you talk. But then you turn right around and do all the evil you can. And that's why we came out the religion. Ain't no God, ain't no Lord, ain't no Jesus. That's all connected together. And I wish, I, and again, I wish those who really are following the world would come out from under that. Because see, why would you want to be equally yoked with those who say God, Lord, and Jesus, but don't do nothing he say do? And it's all a part of the system. So all you got to do is follow the system, the religious system. And you will see all of the symbols, the emblems that represent these religions. And you will see it. You'll see the cross, right? So when you see the cross, you see that's Christian. That's Christianity. Who's the God? Who's the deity of that? Jesus, right? So it's all fitting in a, in a religious system. So that would tell you to come out of Christianity. Because if you come out of that, you come out of the system of religion, which is the superstructures, which are the superstructures that fit on the foundation of Freemasonry. That's why anytime you see those emblems of all these different religions, you will see inside of it, you will see the compass and square, the Freemasonry compass and square with a G in the middle. That's just letting you know that guess what? All of these re religions revolve around around the God of this world, Satan. Oh, oh please, y'all get what I'm saying? It revolves around that. So I don't care if you in Islam, if you in Judaism, if you in Buddhism, if you in Hinduism, if you in Christianity, I don't care which one you in, it's still a superstructure. They are still superstructures that fit on the foundation, which is Freemasonry. But now how can there be any other foundation other than the one that Mashiach set? That just goes to show you that there's another foundation. There's another spirit. There's a demonic. This religious stuff is leading me down the wrong road. This religious stuff is leading me to the one world religion, the one world currency, the one world government is leading me down to this man of lawlessness, the anti-Mashiach, the new beast system, Baal. Come on, wake up. Listen. So. All right, y'all. About done. About done. Let's keep going. Let's keep on going. Ver, verse six, verse six, during the reign of King Josiah, now Josiah became a king when he was eight years old. See, it's different. It's different back then than it was today, than it is today. Josiah became a king when he was eight. <laughs> Look, Yahuwah said to me, have you seen what faithless Israel has done? 
This is Jeremiah. Jeremiah is saying, Jeremiah is saying, during the king, during the reign of King Josiah, Yahuwah said to me, Jeremiah said, Yahuwah said to me, have you seen what faithfulness Israel has done? What have you seen? She has gone up on every high hill and under every spreading tree and has committed adultery there. Verse seven, I thought that after she had done all this, she would return to me, but she did not. I thought after all the pagan worship, I thought after all, of the sexual favors. I thought after all of the temple prostitution, I thought after all of the sexual rituals, I thought after all of the child sacrifice, I thought after all of the pouring out drink offers to queen of heaven, I thought that you would return to me, but she did not. And her unfaithful sister Judah saw it. Remember I told y'all, when you got a little sister, when you have a sister or brother and they see the wickedness of their brother and sister, what they do, they follow the same pattern. They follow the same route. Unfaithful Judah saw. And this is the reason why the Heavenly Father said that Judah's worse than Israel. Only because you saw what they did and you decided you would still do it. <laughs> Ain't that something? Matter of fact, Scripture says that Judah makes Israel look righteous. Wow. Judah makes Israel look righteous. Uh, verse eight, I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce. That's right here. You, you, here, you, you don't want to be with me no more. You don't love me no more. You want to go cheating? Here, here, here. Divorce. Certificate. Divorce. The Assyrians, come get Israel. Let them go. I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. Yet, I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. Judah ain't got no fear. Man, Judah don't fear the Heavenly Father. Our people don't be fearing them. They do what they want to do. They, man, they doing anything they want to do. I, we looking right at it. You can see it. You can see it now. Social media is showing you how much Judah is turning up. She's doing what she want to do. I mean, she's doing what she want to do. I mean, they doing all, they doing, I can't even name the wickedness they doing. They doing so much stuff till, I mean, they got stuff where people hopping out of cars while cars are crashing. I, I Look, I saw this one video where it was two daughters of Zion, Judah, they having a car fight at the gas station or a, at a parking lot. They having a car fight. One of them snuck in the parking space while the one was waiting and they decided and she decided she would crash her car. She would back up and the one that was parked in the parking space backed her car. Booze. So now they fighting cars in the they fighting cars in the parking lot. You get that? You see what our people doing? But we're going to get reparations, though. See that? You know. I admire the courage, the bravery, the valiance. I, I admire the intensity and the power of some of our leaders who are teaching heavily on slavery and what we've been through and, and the reparations and fighting for that. But we not going to get that, though, y'all. We ain't getting no reparations. Don't y'all see the climate? Don't y'all see around y'all we not getting reparations as a whole, collectively? Now, I told you, your, your individual family may be blessed. You may get you something for your obedience. Why? Because the Heavenly Father rewards obedience. So now, if you're righteous, don't you see the reason why you got to come out from among them and be yea separate? Because now he got something for you. But see, the Heavenly Father can't even bless you because you keep staying connected. You keep, stay, you keep staying connected to the heathen. The heathen. And I ain't even talking about the bloodline Gentiles, I'm talking about the heathens that are part of the nation of Israel, the heathens, because you got the heathens too, that are of the bloodline of the Hebrew Israelite community and nation. So what I'm saying is, come on, you got them in your family. You got them at your job. You got them. You got them. You have them at the club you go to. You have them. Acquaintances, you have them. Many of them you went to school with. You see them right now on social media turning up. They ain't changed since school. They doing the same thing now that they did back in high school. They still chasing clout, still chasing popularity. They still chasing views, chasing money, chasing cars. They still chasing the world. They ain't no different. They ain't no different. See? 
and that they see you and they they looking at you like you done gone crazy. Oh, he done he in one of them cults. Oh, he 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 he, he holy and righteous now. He de see that's how they looking at you. But they don't even realize Heavenly Father woke you up. See, they don't even realize that the Heavenly Father is preparing you and priming you for what's coming. That they have their eyes closed to. See. Now, it will behoove those that went to school with you. It will behoove those who are relatives. It will behoove those who you go to work with. It will behoove them to take your advice and to see what you're doing. Are they hearing you? No. Because Judah. That's Judah. That's Judah. 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 And that's the reason why. Verse 8. I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. Yet I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. See, Judah had no fear and also went out and committed adultery. She went out and she started, you see, worshiping pagan gods, worshiping Baal. Told you. What are the brothers doing? They, the brothers are Baal worshiping. Money, power, and sex. More money, more power, more sex. That's the Baal worship. And the Asherah worship for our daughters of Zion, the sister Judah, Judah women, see, it's about being beautiful. It's about being overly sexy and being beautiful and putting on less stuff. See, now the daughters of Zion are putting on less. Now they, now they walking straight out in public with see-through, with see-through we see through spandex. I mean, you can't, there's nothing left to the imagination now. And now they coming right out. Now you can see everything. You see the nipples. You can see everything. You see the, you see everything. You, you can see, come on. You can see the thong. You see everything. But they fully dressed, but you can see everything still. You can see right through them like a mirror. Judah. That's Judah doing that. See? See, now we done came to an area now where everything ain't the white man. That's just us. <laughs> everything ain't white supremacy. Some things are just us. That's just us doing that. See, everything ain't the devil. That's just you doing that. You ain't got to do that, but you're doing it anyway. Because you feel like it. See? See? It's almost like Satan ain't got to ride past you anymore. You riding right up to Satan and giving him the keys. You riding right, you driving right up to Satan. You cutting the car off and you giving him the keys to your whip. That's what our people doing. Satan out trying to get somebody else demon possessed. <laughs> but then you drive up to Satan while he's looking for somebody else. See, while he's seeking whom else he may devour, you drive right up to him and say, here, Satan, here, take my keys and everything. See, why? You're sitting, waiting. That's what you're doing. Now, now here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Almost done. So, verse 8, I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away. Sent her away by the Assyrians because of all her adulteries. Yet, I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. And that's the reason why the Babylonians came to get her. Verse 9. Because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her, she defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. Well, that's the day, stone and wood. See, it was stone and wood back then, but now it's gold, jewelry, and now it's titanium and uranium. See, it's the phone now. It's the, see, it's, it's the phone, it's the laptop, it's the computer, desktop, it's the Apple Watch now, it's the Movado Watch now. That's what that is the bishop ring now. That's what they worshiping now. See. See. Verse 10. In spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense, declares Yahuwah. So see, Judah doesn't return to Yahuwah with a whole heart of repentance, with a full, complete heart of repentance. No, only in pretense, meaning falsehood. Meaning that they own, meaning Judah only repents with her mouth, but her heart is stale and hardened. Her heart still is going to do what she want to do, but by her mouth, she's repenting. See, Judah did not return to me with her heart. No, but only in pretense. 
declares Yahuwah. See? Judah say she loved me. Judah say, forgive me. Judah say I repent, but her heart still says, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to still go ahead and have premarital sex. I'm going to still fornicate. I'm going to still keep my side piece. I'm going to still keep my concubine. I'm going to still keep my fraternity and sorority. See? I'm going to still put money over you. I'm going to still sell. I'm going to still sell my body. See? For crab legs and shrimp. And cars and food and restaurants. I'm going to still do that. See? Come on, you, the men too. Because that's why you had shrine prostitutes. Male, shri male shrine prostitutes. Because they do the same thing. See? So, these are male escorts today. Working for the bail system. Then you have women escorts today. See, sugar mamas and sugar daddies. Sugar mamas and sugar daddies. But see, the daughters of Zion, the Judah women, they just, they want a sugar daddy who don't want no sugar. Hold on, sugar. You, if you want a sugar daddy, he wants your sugar too, sugar Cause that's what Judah, that's what the daughters of Zion want anyway. They, 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 they see they want sugar. But you gotta take the daddy. You gotta take the daddy long stroke right along with the sugar. Don't, don't, don't forget that. Come on, that's what they want. That's what they want. They, they don't, they don't really want to be virtuous women. See. And nurturing mothers and submissive wives. They want to be whores or prostitutes for the money. Judah, Asherah spirit, bail system. That's what they want. That's what our people want. Now, so, yeah, verse 10 again. Then all the way down, in spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense declares Yahuwah, you're false, you're faking. See, you just talking with your mouth, but your heart still in the same place. Verse 11, Yahuwah said to me, faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Judah. See, this is, see, this is, see, this is what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah is saying, faithless, see, Jeremiah is saying that Yahuwah told him that faithless Faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Judah. Verse 12. Go proclaim this message toward the north. The north. Remember, the, nor the north, the no northern tribe of Israel, they were sent to Assyria, right? So, Yahoo is telling Jeremiah, go proclaim this message toward the north. Return, faithless Israel, declares Yahuwah. I will frown on you no longer. See, See how merciful, see how graceful our Heavenly Father is to say, please just come back to me. I love you. Yeah, I sent you away. Yeah, I gave you your certificate of divorce, but I didn't want to send you away. I didn't want to divorce you. I, I love you. P please turn to me. That's that. See, that's what Heavenly Father says. So he said, return, return faithless Israel, declares Yahuwah. I will frown on you no longer, for I am faithful, declares Yahuwah. I'm faithful. I'm faithful, meaning I gave you over to your captors. I gave you over to the Assyrians. I gave you over to your pagan worship. I gave you over to your lovers. I'm talking those you love, but the ones that hate you. I gave you over to them, but I'm faithful. Please come back. Now, the Heavenly Father don't need you. He wants you because he wants you to be protected by him. The Heavenly Father don't really need your love because he's He's dying from love deprivation. No, you the one that's dying from love deprivation. You the one that need the Heavenly Father. You the one that's going to need him once you get yourself in all this mess because you won't listen. You going to need him. So he said, please just come to me. I want to love you. I want to protect you. I want to heal you. I want to deliver you. I want to prosper you. I want to, oh, okay. Please come to me. Because I, I want you to live forever, Judah. I want you to live forever, Israel. 
I, I want you, I want you to live forever to where in a split second, you could go all around the world if you want to. You won't have to fly no plane. You won't have to drive no car. You won't have to walk nowhere. All you got to do is be in the spirit and live forever with me in the kingdom. And in one second, you can be all around the world in a matter of seconds. Won't be no more sickness. Won't be no more drought. Won't be no more lack. Won't be no more pain. Won't be no more jail. Be no more oppression. Be no more racism. Be no more drunkenness. Be no more drug addiction. Be no more pornography. Be no more Satan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's why I want you. I want you. Because I don't want to send you to hell. I, I don't send you to hell. You send yourself by rejecting me. But I don't want you to go there. That's why I'm telling you, return to me. Come to me. Come to me. It's going to be worth it. I didn't let you live years out in the world. I didn't, I didn't let you live when I could have killed you. You was already living for the world. You was already living for the bail system. You was living for the Asherah system. I, I, I let you play there for 10, 15, 20 years. Can you come home now? Can you work for me now? Can you live for me now? Can you speak on my behalf now? So you can get in, in, so you can get an incorruptible crown forever that no one can beat, no one can top, no one can match, won't be taken away from you. Can, 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 can that happen? Because that, I, I, that's what I want. I want to be able to tell you. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I, I want to tell you that. But do you want me to tell you that? Is that what you want to hear from me? Do you want to hear that from me? Because I sure want you to hear it. See, because hell is for the dogs, for the dogs. See, for the demon worshipers, liars and cheaters and stealers and robbers and killers. It's for them. I don't want you with them. The ones who are in magic arts and Ones who continued on in their immorality. And I, I don't want you with them, Judah. I don't want you with them, Israel. I want y'all to come back together. See, y'all were split since King Solomon, but I want y'all to integrate. I want y'all to come back together. And I want the Gentiles to come in too. I want the Gentiles in too. I want all those who decided that they would receive my son because of y'all's disbandment, because of y'all's disobedience. I want, I, I want all y'all to come in. I want all y'all to partake in the supper of the lamb. I want all of y'all to come in and receive eternal life. Because in the end, ain't there one of y'all, you ain't going to come to my kingdom with your white Caucasian body. You ain't going to come to my kingdom in your black body. You ain't going to come to my kingdom in your flesh, in your blood. You're going to come to my kingdom in the spirit. So all I'm looking for is clean spirits. All I'm looking for is for y'all to be one in the body of my son. All I'm looking for y'all to be is ones who were filled up with my ruach. The only ones I'm looking for are the ones who displayed the fruits of the spirit. The only ones I'm looking for are Ones who will serve me. That's what I'm looking for. That's, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I want. Because it's all for you. This ain't for me. My, na my name is Yahuwah. Meaning that I'm self-existing. Meaning that if I destroy all you heathens, I'm going to still be here. I'm going to still exist. I'm self-existing. I don't need you. You need me. But I'm bargaining with you. And, and, and come on. Ain't that what he said? He said, come on, can we reason? Remember, Yahweh says, can, can, I, can we reason with one another? He's actually saying, can we reason? Can I bargain with you? But not for me, for you. For you. Because you need me, I don't need you. Because at the end of the day, if you don't give me my credit, if you don't give me my praise, if you don't give me my worship, I'll make the butterflies worship. I'll make the roach, the roaches. They'll worship. The rocks will cry out. See, the ants and all of the animals and all of the insects, I'll ha they'll have a, we'll have a praise party amongst the ants, the roaches, and the rats, and the bees, the possums, and the raccoons, and the birds, and we'll have a big praise party. My whole, my whole creation, the mountains will be coming down, earthquakes all over the place, the moon will fall out the sky, the sun will turn red. I, look, the sun will turn black, the moon will turn blood red, I, the stars will fall from the sky, I'll turn, I will turn up this place. You will, you talking about y'all know how to turn up? 
Y'all turn up can't match my turn up. My, I'll turn this whole place out. I'll turn this whole thing out. I'll turn. I'll have a turn up so much. I, my turn up will be so turned up. I'll have people coming out their graves to turn up. Don't play with me. See, the I've your father saying, don't play with me. I'll have dead animals come back to life. I have people coming out the graves. I'll have rocks splitting. I'll have oceans. I'll turn up. If you don't give me my worship. Because, see, I created y'all to worship me. But if you don't want to, fine. I'll just, I'll make my creation. See, I'll make, I'll make my other creation turn up. See, that which would be a shame. That would be a crying shame for the ones that he made and created in his image to not give him praise and worship. So much so that he, have, that he would have to make a lifeless creation of his. He would have to make the animals who go off and operate and move based on their instincts to worship and praise. Ah. Come on. Y'all had an opportunity to be born again. The animals could never be born again. And they praising me. Come on, man, y'all. You, you, you see? So, so listen, verse 9. Because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her, she defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. Verse 10. In spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense, declares Yahuwah. Verse 11. Yahuwah said to me, faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Judah. Verse 12, go proclaim this message toward the north. Return, faithless Israel, declares Yahuwah. I will frown on you no longer. I am faithful, declares Yahuwah. I will not be angry forever. He's telling you he ain't going to be angry forever. This is the reason why, this is the reason why when you're dead, this is the reason why it ain't no coming back. That's why he says that man is appointed to die once and after that to face judgment. Why? Because you had all the opportunity. I was calling you all that time. I was calling you. I told you I was not going to be angry forever. I told you I will forgive you. I told you I will consecrate you. I told you I would. I told you. So now why did you, why did you go all the way to the very end? And do all the evil you can. So much so it got to the point to where I had to give you over to your evil and to your wickedness to where you don't even have an opportunity to repent. You don't have an opportunity to receive my son. Verse 13. Only acknowledge your guilt. So see, he says that, listen, I will frown on you no longer for I am faithful, declares Yahuwah. I will not be angry forever. Verse 13. Only acknowledge your guilt. So that means that I won't be angry with you forever under the condition that you acknowledge your guilt. Acknowledge that you've been sinning. Acknowledge that you've been going too far away from me. Acknowledge that you need to repent. Acknowledge your sins. See? That's the reason why Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 says, whoever conceals his sin, whoever hides his sin does not prosper. But whoever confesses and renounces his sins obtains mercy. See that? See that? Whoever conceals his sins, you don't prosper. But if you say, hey, I repent. But if you confess your sins and renounce them and turn away, you will obtain mercy. But So that's why he said, verse 13, only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against Yahweh your Elohim. You have scattered your favors to foreign gods. You've scattered your favors. You got this concubine. You got that concubine. You got that pagan god. You got that pagan goddess. You got this money. You got these cars. You got that house. You got this. See, all of this stuff are gods, foreign gods. See, you have scattered your favors, your sexual favors, because that's what I, because that, because see, Baal and Asherah worship always entails sex. Now, I need y'all to get this. This is about to be deep. Even when you had sex, right? And you, even when you relinquished and you nullified the covenant between you and the heavenly father and you went and you exploited yourself sexually, you still, you still committed a sexual act. 
It's like you cheated on our Heavenly Father still through sex because even your sexual activity is spiritual. It's not just flesh. So you still cheating. You still committing adultery against our Heavenly Father when you go and have sex with somebody outside of his covenant of marriage. Why? Because it's a spiritual experience and it's a spiritual activity along with a carnal and a fleshly one. So this is how, so now it's almost like you give your spirit over to these pagan gods. You, you, it's like you, you, you leave his union spiritually and you go connect yourself to the pagan God spiritually and physically through sex. So one of the biggest acts you can do to commit adultery against the heavenly father is to fornicate sexually is to commit adultery and not be in a marriage. You see, you see what I'm saying? So, okay. Husband and wives, husbands and wives, it, husband, wife. If you commit adultery against your husband or your wife, your spouse, you're really committing adultery against our heavenly father because it's all spiritual at the same time. That's the reason why when you come together, you become one flesh. Man is the husband, woman is the wife. You come together, become one flesh, right? Well, his spirit is what protects you. So that's the reason why when you, when you, when you, when you fornicate, and you have and you have children out of wedlock, well, you know, you committing adultery. So not only have you committed adultery against our Heavenly Father by having sexual contact and activity out of out of out of marriage, and you have babies out of wedlock, then you turn right around and sacrifice them children. And the and the scripture says, Yahweh says, them my children. You sacrifice my children to Molech, not yours. So when you sacrifice children, your children, and they ain't yours. See, that's why I gave mine up a long time ago. I gave mine to him. I said, Heavenly Father, you take care of them. I, I, I mean, you know, they your children. You said they yours. Oh, I believe you. They yours. Take them. Take them. Only thing I could do is teach them right. So they ain't your children. They, they just yours here. Meaning, these children are borrowed. The Heavenly Father allowed you to borrow these children to his. Why you on earth? So that means you should be a good steward over what he entrusted in your care. Meaning you should you should prepare the children that belong to him to go back to see him. Did you hear what I said? You should prepare the children that he allowed you to have on your on on on, on his behalf. You should prepare them to go back to see him. But you preparing his children for Satan. You hear that? We spend all this time, get your money, get your husband, get your wife, get your cars, get your house, get your education. And we sitting here preparing Yahuwah's children for Satan, for Baal, for Asherah. When we really need to be preparing his children for him. Here, get in his word, train the child up in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. See, Or 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. See, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. See, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I talked as a child, and I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. See, this is what you should be teaching your young boys. See, when I was a child, see, I thought as a child, I talked as a child, I reasoned. See, pull your pants up, boy. Pull your pants up on your behind, boy. Stop talking with Joe and Young and stop with that. Nah, ma, effer. Nah, man. Nah, young. Nah, bruh. Nah, bro. Stop. Stop. Put away childish things. Put away that childish talk. Put away that childish walk. Put away them childish toys. Put them video games down. What you doing playing with that? 45 years old, sitting in front of the TV smoking a joint, playing a video game. What you doing doing that? You need to be reading the word. Read the word to your children that's walking around watching you smoke and playing video games. You need to be teaching them the word. Y'all don't let me get started on this. See? Sh take them phones away from them. I heard a pastor say they three, they three months old with a cell phone. <laughs> See? That's the problem. Take them cell phones from them children. So what if they throw temper tantrums? Well, guess what? If they catch a temper tantrum, you did it because you turned them on to it. You could have told them no, no, no. You ain't having that. 
but you got them used to it. Just like we were used to birthdays when we came up. We were used to birthdays and Chuck E. Cheese, the rat. We were used to Disneyland and we were used to Sesame Street and we were used to all this stuff. And then we raise our children up on it. But guess what, though? The only reason your children know all this stuff is because you taught them. You taught them that. They know birthdays because you taught them. If you if you raise your children up, they'd have never knew nothing about no birthdays. They'd never knew nothing about it. You'd have just told them, well, today you are this old or whatever, and that was it. But you got them caught up in the birthday cakes and the balloons and the candles. Artemis. See, Artemis worship. Birthdays are the highest celebration for Satanists. See, in the satanic Bible, in the satanic Bible of Anton LaVey in 1969, See, y'all turning them up on that. And I'm not saying don't acknowledge the day you were born and give it back to y'all. Oh, well, I'm saying y'all going through the whole celebration and y'all making a whole week out of it, a whole week festival out of your birthday, a whole month. And you and then you're going to go saying this my birthday weekend. What you going to go do? Are you going to be in the scriptures the whole weekend for your birthday weekend? Nope. I know what you're going to go do. See, you're going to go play out in the streets. That's what you're going to go do. See, now I'm not, now listen, y'all, when I talk about birthdays, I'm not talking about having dinner. I'm not talking about talking about what the Heavenly Father has done for you. I'm not talking about that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making a big pagan celebration out of it. That's what I'm talking about. See, if you want to go out and have dinner, go out and have dinner. That's the reason why scripture says that whatever you do, whether eating or drinking, do it in do it in the name of Yahuwah. See, drink and eat to his glory if you're going to do that. But we want to celebrate like the heathens have marketed these celebrations. That's how we want to do it. And he, nah, because that doesn't worship and honor him. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? All right, y'all, let me get on. Let me get on. Let me get on because I'm about done. Um, Then it says here, uh, let's keep going. Verse 13, only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against Yahweh your, your Elohim. You have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every spreading tree and have not obeyed me, declares Yahweh. You have not obeyed me. Verse 14, return faithless people, declares Yahweh, for I am your husband. I'm your husband. I'm your husband. See, I'm your husband. The two, the two daughters, see the two daughters, the two, they two sisters. Daughters, see? Daughters. Now he's our heavenly father, but see, you got to realize Jerusalem is a woman too. Jerusalem is the bride, is the woman. So our heavenly father, Yahuwah, is a husband to his woman, Israel, as a nation, Jerusalem as a nation. But see, but Israel being split apart like that, northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah, they sisters. See, meaning the script, meaning in scripture, there's a lot of symbolism. See. So just as much as Israel as a whole entire kingdom, Jerusalem is a woman. Is the bride, heavenly father, he's the husband, right? But then, but then Judah and Israel are sisters. Okay. Okay. Verse 14. Return, faithless people, declares Yahuwah, for I am your husband. I will choose you one from a town and two from a clan and bring you to Zion. Meaning he's, he's only going to get a remnant. That's what that means. I will choose you one from a town and two from a clan and bring you to Zion. Meaning that only a remnant is going to return, right? Only a remnant. Verse 15, then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. He to see the heavenly father said that, listen, I'm going to choose just a few of y'all, a remnant, and I'm going to give you shepherds after my own heart. 
Meaning I'm going to give you pastors. I'm going to give you leaders. I'm going to give you spiritual leaders who are going to speak my heart. That's a real prophet. I told you a prophet is one who speaks the heart of our Heavenly Father. A pastor, a shepherd, a real shepherd who is going to is going to give lead you with knowledge and understanding, not this foolishness that they talking. That you can just do what you want to do and you know you were saved by grace through faith and you know the hard work is done. No, the hard work is just starting. You got to you got to walk this walk. See? This is where we got this is where we got mixed up and twisted up. Because we got prophets and these so-called pastors that, that are working. See, listen, you got these pastors that are working for the system of Baal and Asherah. Now, what's their goal? Their goal is to sacrifice themselves to the system of Baal and Asherah by teaching the people sexual immorality, food sacrifice to idols, and all the other stuff that's against the Heavenly Father. See? It's the reason why you talk, these pastors, you hear nothing about the New World Order. You hear nothing about what's going on. They don't say nothing about Biden and what he's doing. They don't say nothing. They don't say nothing about the corrosion of this democracy. They say nothing about the corrosion and the hypocrisy of this false, deceptive democracy, which is really a one world republic. They don't say nothing about that. They got you keep they got you turning it. They got you continuing to feed in and pour into it. Meanwhile, you meanwhile, your whole your whole essence is being swindled. Your whole essence is being swallowed up by the system of Baal. See? And that's why you can't connect to the spirit with our Heavenly Father. You can't connect to Yah. That's why you can't connect to Yah. See? Because these 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah who sit at Jezebel's table keep on leading you to the world. And you are becoming further and further disconnected from the spirit of our Heavenly Father through Yahushua Mashiach by connecting to the spirit of Baal and Asherah. But then you got these mouthpieces that ain't saying nothing against homosexuality, sexual immorality. They ain't saying nothing against pedophilia. They ain't saying nothing against Having babies out of wedlock. They ain't saying nothing against. They ain't speaking nothing. They ain't, they ain't. You understand that. You know. Okay, I'm almost done, y'all. I'm almost done. I'm right. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. So he says, look, verse 15. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart. Who Meaning, I'm going to give you shepherds who care about what I care about. I'm going to give you shepherds who think about what I think about. I'm going to give you shepherds who feel what I feel. I'm going to give you shepherds who feel what I feel. Listen, verse 16. In those days when your numbers have greatly increased or have increased greatly in the land, declares Yahuwah, people will no longer say the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah. The people will no longer say the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah. Why won't they say that? Because it, won't, it will no longer be about the Ark of the Covenant right? Where the two tablets of stone were, where the high priest had to go in the most holy place to atone for the sins of him and Israel because of their sins they committed. We will no longer say the Ark of the Covenant under the, under, under the, the Levitical priesthood. We won't say the Ark of the Covenant, right? It will never enter their minds or be remembered. Why? Because he said that he will put his laws in our minds and write them in our hearts. So we won't have to deal with the Ark of the Covenant anymore because now we have a better promise. We don't have the, the Levitical priesthood anymore. We have a high priest who came in the order of Melchizedek, Yahushua HaMashiach, right? Then it says, it will never enter their minds or be remembered. It will not be missed, nor will another one be made. No, another one won't be made because the one is in heaven. That's why he said when the heaven when heaven opens up, the Ark of the Covenant will appear. The Ark of the Covenant. Okay, listen. We'll be, we'll be right there. Okay. Um, verse 17. At that time, they will call Jerusalem the throne of Yahuwah, and all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of Yahuwah. Did you hear that? Oh, did y'all hear that part? Please, listen, listen. I need y'all to catch this. Verse 17. At that time, they will call Jerusalem the throne of Yahuwah and all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of Yahuwah. Now he said all nations. So now that sounds more like not just Judah and Israel coming back together. 
That sounds like all the nations. The nations of the Gentiles. Those who were grafted in. Those who received Mashiach. Right? That's what it, that's what it sounds like. The body. Because you got to remember. The Heavenly Father, he's the root. Mashiach is divine. And we're the branches. Connected to the vine. Connected to the root. It's so you could bear the fruit. First fruits among, see, see, you got to realize, Mashiach's our first fruit. He was the first fruits. Told you, he was our Passover lamb, feast of unleavened bread, lived a sinless life, right? Then he became our first fruits, meaning he was the firstborn among the dead. And because we received this spirit, we first fruits right along with him. He's our big brother. So we follow him. Because of him, he took the keys to hell and the grave. And now the same authority that Adam lost, now we're, we're able to now rekindle that. All right. So verse 17, at that time, they will call Jerusalem the throne of Yahuwah and all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of Yahuwah. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. Verse 18, in those days, the people of Judah will join the people of Israel and together they will come from a northern land to the land I gave your ancestors as an inheritance. See, that could be talking about that could be talking about the thousand year millennium, you know, but that was talking about the land. See, when Jerusalem, see, when Judah went back home after the 70 years of captivity, when they went back home to rebuild their homeland under under um, Persian King Cyrus. Remember, some of Israel, some of Israel was integrated in that. You understand what I'm saying? So in those days, the people of Judah would join the people of Israel and together they will come from a northern land. Right to the land I gave your ancestors as an inheritance. So they came, some of them came from Assyria and came and integrated. But then he's talking about in the end. Because see, right now we still split. So in the end, he we're gonna go to the land that he gave our ancestors. This is the reason why ain't no sense of going to the land now. Ain't no sense in trying to travel to Jerusalem now, trotting down by the Gentiles, because they're gonna trot that down to the time of the end, to the time that is up for them. See that? And so that land is going to be destroyed. And they know that. That's the reason why they're trying to get back out. They're trying to get to Ukraine because they already know that, that, that guess what? Armies are going to surround that and it's going to be messed up. The New World Order is going to take that over and they already know. And they know that. So that's why they're trying to get. But they can't move. They can't get. They ain't letting them go back. Russia then took over that. Ukraine, they didn't took that over. Said, no, you're not coming back. Stay there. Stay right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So wait a minute. But all that fighting that's over there between them and the Palestinians and all of the bombs and missiles and suicide and all the stuff that's going on over there, I thought Jerusalem was supposed to be peace. I thought that they were supposed to be peaceful. I thought that there was supposed to be a land of prosperity and peace and nah, it's, it's, it's hell and hot water over there. See that? So that just lets you know that the reason why there ain't no peace over there is because the true people ain't there. But that's going to be destroyed. And then we is gonna be we gonna when 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 Mashiach returns we gonna go back we gonna go back to the land, and we are gonna be sitting under our own vine, own tree, and the wolf will lay with the lamb, and the baby will be able to play in the viper's nest, and, and it won't be no none of that stuff that they that see like our people wanna make it out to be. See, they trying to make it out to be like we're going to be slaving the Gentiles out like we were slaves. Nah, it ain't going to be like that. See, we were only enslaved because of our disobedience, rebellion, and our turn up. They forget that. It's our disobedience, our rebellious, and our stiff neckness, and, 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 and it was our unbelief, and it was all of the paganism and all of that that got us sent throughout our captivities. Got us sent to seven captivities, including this one. So we're not going to be in the thousand year millennium where Mashiach will be front and center where he's going to be ruling. You think he's going to have us? You think he's going to have us slaving out people and doing them dirty and mistreating people and raping people and molesting people and hanging them? You think Mashiach going to have that on his watch? No, no, he's not going to have that. It's going to be prosperity and peace. 
and they're going to be rebuilding the homeland, just like we're going to be rebuilding the homeland. They're going to be rebuilding it, they, and we're going to be rebuilding it, but they're going to be, this is the reason why the Heavenly Father says, I'm going to surround the nations, and I'm going to collect large quantities of gold and silver and all of that. Why? Because all of that stuff, the Gentiles got it. But he said that in the end, all of that stuff, I'm going to get it back. And then these Gentiles, they're going to pay homage to me by paying homage to my people. So this is the reason why you can't escape the bloodline because the bloodline is still chosen. Jerusalem, that means Jerusalem, Judah, and the northern kingdom, Ephraim. New heavens and new earth will then be established and that will be the new Jerusalem. Get that? So that means that when Mashiach returns, that's not the end of the world. That's just the end of the age. Get that? It's not the end of the world. It's just the end of this age. Because we'll be moving on to the thousand year millennium where he says that it will be a, it will almost be like a shame and a crime for people to be dying at a hundred. It'll be almost like people dying as babies if you died a hundred. So he said people going to be really living that long. Like in a thousand year millennium, people going to be li living that long. Why? It's going to be peace, prosperity. Ain't going to be no GMO in the foods. Ain't going to be no fluoride in the water. Ain't going to be no pills and chemicals and toxins and all that. So in a thousand year millennium with Mashiach reigning, that means that, listen, you're going to be living a long time. And if you don't live a long time, that must have meant that you did something. You did something wrong for you to not live long. Right? Because remember, people are still going to be in the flesh. You're going to have this, you're going to have people in the spirit in the millennium kingdom, but then you're going to have people in the flesh. People are going to be reproducing during the thousand year millennium. People are going to be reproducing. This is the only reason why Satan got to come back up after the thousand years to try to deceive people. Why? Because the kids, the children that are going to be reproduced, the children that are going to be produced in a thousand year millennium don't know nothing about Satan. Don't know nothing about. See, they, don't, they won't know anything about the wickedness and the evil. So that means that these children's got to grow up 
during the thousand year millennium. And then that means that Satan, and you already know some people might not want to go in accordance to Mashiach's rule as they're growing up. And then Satan got to come back up and he has to just try to deceive people. Now, those who are in the spirit, listen, those who are reigning with Mashiach in the spirit, in their spiritual bodies, remember the scripture says that the second death won't have any power over them. That means that those who will be reigning, so your goal is to reign with Mashiach. Your goal is not to wait all the way up to the last minute to, 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 to repent and be in your, in your physical bodies, right? No, you want to be among the Old Testament saints and the priests. You want to be, yeah, you want to be the elite so you can be in your spiritual bodies. Meaning after the thousand year millennium is up, you can't die no more. You can't die because the second death has no power over you because you didn't already went to death. You, you, your death is over. But those who have to come through the millennium kingdom in the flesh, they got a death. They still got to, they still got to go through the judgment, meaning the great white throne judgment. You get that? see. Okay. Okay. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Um, um, um let, let, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Um, somebody asked me, sister Elizabeth. No, I don't have any videos. Um, I'm going to do a video on the thousand year millennium. I'm going to do one on that particular specifically on that, but I'm just kind of like, you know, um, touching a little bit, touching the surface of it a little bit now. Uh, Okay. Okay, I'm done. I'm about to be done, y'all. Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Okay. Then it says, listen, then it's, verse 19, I myself said, how gladly would I treat you like my children and give you a pleasant land, the most beautiful inheritance of any nation. I thought you would call me father and not turn away from following me. I thought you would call me father. Verse 20, but like a woman unfaithful to her husband, so you Israel have been unfaithful to me. Like a woman, see, Israel is a woman, heavenly father, spiritual husband, right? Yahuwah, spiritual husband. So that, but verse 20, but like a woman unfaithful to her husband, so you Israel have been unfaithful to me, declares Yahuwah. Verse 21, a cry is heard on the barren heights, the weeping and pleading of the people of Israel. Oh, it's going to be weeping and pleading. Didn't you hear the cries heard on the barren heights? It's going to be weeping and pleading. That's what I said. When this thing finally turns up and, and, and the heavenly father got to do what he has to do to, 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 to really set his people straight. That's why he said that I'm going to punish Jacob, although I, I won't leave all of them. I won't leave them unpunished. So he's already saying that there's something that's going to be destroyed. Right. But he but the but the goal is for him to purify. Jacob's trouble is not to destroy us. It's to purify us, to get us prepared for the kingdom. But some people, some of Jacob are not, they're going to get destroyed because they're not going to see the times. They're not going to understand that it's Jacob's trouble and that this is happening to turn their hearts back to Yah. And so they're going to be further in rebellion. And so because of their hardened hearts and their rebellious and stiff necked ways and attitudes, they're going to turn or they're going to get deeper and deeper into their sin and destruction during Jacob's trouble. So meaning they're going to be trying to fight their way out of Jacob's trouble instead of turning their hearts to repentance to Yahweh. They're going to be trying to find ways to still save their life. And that's the reason why that first, Th first Thessalonians, first Thessalonians chapter five, verse three says that uh, when they start saying peace and safety, right? When they start saying peace and safety, then destruction will overtake them like labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. See, that's why he said that when people start saying peace and safety, then destruction will come on them suddenly. See that? When they start saying, oh, this is, everything's going to be all right and we're great and good and all that. No, suddenly destruction overtake you like labor pains on a pregnant woman and you won't escape. Now, when now because of Jacob's trouble, when they see that, 
destruction coming, they're going to be trying to fight their way to refuge. They're going to be trying to fight their way to safety, fight their way to more money and more prosperity. But then they're going to be destroyed trying to do that because the Heavenly Father saying, there's no way you're going to find no type of safe haven or peace without me. And that's what's going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all what's going to happen. Uh, okay. Verse 20 to 21. But like a woman unfaithful to her husband, so you, Israel, have been unfaithful to me, declares Yahuwah. Verse 21. A cry is heard on the barren heights, the weeping and pleading of the people of Israel, the weeping and the pleading, because they have perverted their ways and have forgotten Yahuwah their Elohim. Yeah, you crying, weeping and pleading. See, you weeping because you realize that the Heavenly Father ain't playing with you. You weeping because you seeing the plagues and the financial collapse and you seeing all the stuff that's happening. You weeping and you pleading for him to save you now, but you wasn't pleading when everything was up. You wasn't pleading then. See, you wasn't weeping and pleading when you were good. But now that everything didn't turn for the worse and you can't control it because, see, that's what we want too. see Judah and Israel. They want control. They want to control the outcome and control their circumstances by their own knowledge and money and position and power and platform and influence and awards and notoriety. You see, they want to control their own circumstances. But then when Israel see that they can't the pleading and the weeping, the weeping and the pleading. OK, why? Because they perverted themselves out. For the system, they perverted themselves and they saw that all that perversion didn't pay them out. It didn't give them no payout. All that perversion, it reaped them no benefit in the end. They'll see that. Verse 22, return faithless people. I will cure you of backsliding. He's telling you, return. I'm going to cure you of your backsliding, meaning that that I'm not going to just mask the symptoms. I'm going to cure you. Meaning after I get finished with you, you won't be backsliding no more because I'm going to cure you. He said, I will cure you of backsliding. Yes, we will come to you for you are Yahuwah our Elohim. Yes, we will come to you. Verse 23, surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains is a deception. See, surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and the mountains is a deception. Surely in Yahuwah, our Elohim is the salvation of Israel. So he's saying that, look, all, all on, the, on the hills and the mountains, that idolatry is deception. See, you paying homage to Asherah and Molech, Baal and Shamash and, you know, all these pagan deities, you see. But that's, that's, that right there, that's, uh, that's deception. Oh, wait a minute, but let's bring it forward. You paying homage to your money and your cars, your Lexuses and your Benzes and, 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 and your frat brothers and sober sisters, and you paying homage to all the stuff you got and all that. You bowing down to it and you marveling over it, but you see, that this deception. But surely in Yahuwah, our Elohim is the salvation of Israel. Meaning only I can save you. Not your stuff. Okay, verse 25. Verse 25. This is it, y'all. Last one. Let us lie down in our shame. That's it. So now what you got to do? So now what you got to do? You got to repent. You got to lie down in your shame. Let us lie down in our shame and let our disgrace cover us. We have sinned against Yahuwah, our Elohim. Meaning I have sinned. Heavenly Father, I repent. Repentance. I've sinned. Stop with this trying to act brave and courageous. See, I know the problem with Judah and Israel is, is that they got pride. They don't want their friends and their constituents to look at them like they different. They still want to keep up with the, with the Joneses. They still want to keep up with the popularity and they want to keep up with, with the, with the cheers of the crowd. And they still want to tell their, 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 their jokes, their dirty, nasty jokes that ain't funny. They want to be funny men. They want to be comedians. See, that's see, Judah men want to do that. The men of Judah, they want to fornicate. They want to drink all weekend and fornicate and tell their dirty jokes to women. Hopefully they can go home with them. Offer the bail spirit. 
And so they can reap the Asherah spirit and Baal and Asherah can come together. So see, that's what they want. The Baal spirit in the man of Judah and Israel and the Asherah spirit, okay, and the women of Judah and Israel, they can come together with the spirit and come together in their sexual lust. Because the because the because the brother, the Judah, the, the, the Judah brother had the spirit of Baal. He brought the money and the Judah woman, the Judah woman and the and the woman of Israel. She had the spirit of Asherah and she brought the sexiness. And so that money and the sexiness came together. And now here you have the spirit of Baal and Asherah, the sins. See, you got the temple prostitutes coming together with the male shrine prostitutes. And this is where you got the fun and the turn up. This is where you got the Baal and Asherah spirit, the system. That's so. At this point, let us lie down in our shame. Heavenly Father, we, we, we didn't sin. We didn't turn against you. We didn't spend too long. Spent too long engaging. Immersing ourselves. We, we, we didn't spend too long immersing ourselves in the indulgence of Baal and Asherah. We spent too long worshiping God, worshiping money as our God. We didn't spend too long. We didn't spend too long putting everything before you. Let us lie down in our shame and let our disgrace cover us. We have sinned against Yahuwah our Elohim. Both we and our ancestors from our youth till this day, we have not obeyed Yahuwah our Elohim. Yeah. The sins of the two sisters. The sins of the two sisters. See, we got to get right. Repent. Turn away. Come out, shut it down, come out of her, come out of her, my people. So you do not partake in her sins. You do not catch her plagues. What I, what's wrong with our people? What's going on with them? They catching her plagues. Why? Because they partaking in her sins. So you want to partake in her sins? You're going to catch her plagues. Babylon. That's it. So you see, Revelation is speaking now to us right now. Our people catching plagues as a result of partaking in her sins. Who? Babylon. The whole Babylon. The mother of harlots. Right? So the only way to get protection from the plagues the only way to get the protection from the wild beast and the sword, the sword, the famine and plague, the only way to get that type of protection, got to get, got to repent. He's there to help you. You do not have to walk this walk on your own, alone. Because see, when you was turning up with Judah and Israel, when you was turning up, you was alone then anyway. You was alone. See, you can see you see you don't want to come out because you think I'm going to be alone. I'm gonna, I need somebody. Can somebody be with me? And I need to go with somebody to the movies and to the park. And I need somebody to drink with and all that. But see, you alone in the world. You around all your turn up buddies, king and queen, and you alone with them because they don't care nothing about you. No way. See, so you alone. But if you walk with the Heavenly Father alone, you won't be. Oh, let me help you. You was lonely when you was walking in the world claiming you got all these people. You was lonely. But now that you're walking with the Heavenly Father, you may be alone walking with him, but you're not lonely because you got him. See, you ain't lonely. It's a, it was been an illusion this time. Problem is you, 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 you need people to validate you and affirm you. See, that's why you ain't got no self-esteem. That's the reason why you can't stay focused. That's the reason why you can't pursue the purpose and the calling that the Heavenly Father has placed upon your lives. That's why you can't do it. 
Because you got so many people that you have to appease to. You got so many people that you have to please and that you have to, that you have to, um, that you have to subject yourself to, to show them that you cool like them. You I ain't cool like you. Yeah, I, I, I'm a, I, you know. Because if you're not cool and you're not a street cat, you know what they call you. They call you a civilian. But no, you ain't no civilian. I'm a child of the most high. I'm a child of the most high. I'm a soldier in his army. No, you, no, 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 no. You a civilian. See, because the weapons that we fight with are not carnal. See that? And they don't even know. They don't even know. Y'all, y'all want to be street, right? Y'all want to be gangsters and thugs and street. And y'all want to call everybody else civilians like y'all, like y'all the armed forces, like y'all top, like y'all top renegades. Why don't you go over there and fight? Why don't you let them, why don't, so why don't y'all go over there to them Pakistan and Iraq and Iran? Why don't you go over there and start shooting over there and killing over there like you're doing in the hood to your own people? Why don't you go over there? See, since you was since you ain't a civilian, that's what they. That, I think that's what they really need to do. They need to. They need to drop off all the heathens, all the ones who want to continue to keep up these turf wars and gang wars in their own community, depriving the fatherless, the poor, and the widow. Shooting and killing and poisoning their own community. Why don't you take them heathens and, and fly them right over there? First class. Take them right on over there and drop them out. And, 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 and guess what? And put backpacks on them so they can have parachutes. And have parachutes on every one of them heathens and, let them par and throw them right out the plane. And so that they can, they can, eat, they can, eat, uh, they can unleash and, and they can, um, and they can unleash that. Parachute and let them float where they may and fight. Oh, y'all want to fight? Oh, y'all want to kill? Y'all want to shoot and kill? Let's take you over there where that's all they do. Every day, all day. That's all they do. Men, women, and children. All day, that's what they do. So take them over there and let y'all have a field day. But now nah, you want to rape out your own community that you know can't keep up with the lifestyle that you promoting. The lifestyle that you shoving down the throats of those who live amongst you and around you, you know they can't keep up with that lifestyle. You know everybody ain't going to make it out. You know everybody's not going to live past 21 by trying to obtain the same prosperity that you think you're receiving by slaving out your own community by drugs, prostitution, and crime, and gang banging. Come on. Making them youngsters feel like if they ain't thugs and gangsters, they'll never amount to nothing. See, that's what y'all doing. And so you raping your own community out and you ain't giving back to the community because you call yourself giving back. But you are giving, but, but, but you have raped the community more than you giving back. You done made millions off of the community. By crack babies and cracked out mothers and more brothers going to the penitentiary. You done made millions off the neighborhood only for you to give back turkeys on Thanksgiving. Are you kidding? We doing give a, we going, we doing toy giveaways for the hood. Man, get there. You got the demons coming to the hood. You got more demons. You got more stuff of the oppressor coming to the hood. See? So get that, get that mentality. Get, we all grew up on it. I was in it too. Everybody took, everybody had a piece of it. Now you might not have been in it like your friends and everybody else might've been somebody that was deep in it. And they went to, they went to the penitentiary. Some are dead now. And you tried to get your feet wet by selling your little weed and doing your little thing. And you, and the heavenly father stung your behind and you got out that game real quick because you saw it wasn't for you. Come on. We all been there. Had your little weed, you, you sold some and smoked some. You smoked more than you sold. Come on, get out of here. And at the end of the day, you couldn't do it. See, you couldn't do it. You couldn't keep up with it. You couldn't even keep up with it. You see, couldn't keep up with that lifestyle. Heavenly Father got you out. Told you real quick, that ain't for you. 
ain't for you. Cause that's what he told me. Sure told me that. Tried to get in, stepped in, got my little, got my little pinky toe wet. No, sir. He said, oh no, no, not for you. And so I had to, I had to continue to live my life like what they called me. A nerd, a geek, and a square, and whatever, a scrub, whatever they called me. But now they dead. See, now they dead. Oh, you were, yeah, you was a gangster, you was a thug, but now you're dead, Bubba. You dead now. And where are you going? To hell. You dead. Now I'm still here preaching, living for the Heavenly Father, living righteous, trying to, tr attempting to anyway. See that? But all that time, you thought you were missing something. All that time, you, listen, listen, you had people, you had those who you were trying to be like around you. You had them lowering your morale so much to where you wanted to kill yourself. You wanted to commit suicide because you couldn't dress like them, talk like them, live like them, drive cars like them, be popular as them, beautiful and as handsome as they are. But look at them now. They got four and five and six kids out of wedlock. Now their faces are sunken in and got missing teeth from smoking that crock, that smoking that meth. Um, come on, y'all. Now you see them on the corner. You see them right in front of that same 7-Eleven that all of y'all used to go to to get Ninja Turtle pies. They still sitting in front of that same 7-Eleven. Drunk. Asking for dollars. Like that. Is that where we are now? Y'all, we asking for dollars? Come on, bro. We, 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 we. Dollars. Man, the whole financial system getting ready to be digital. They getting ready to digitalize. And you still asking for quarters and dollars? Bruh, you, you, you so dope. Bruh, I remember, man, you had hoopties out the yang. You stayed with the latest. You stayed, you had the fresh Sergio Tacchini, the fresh troops. You had the Jordans. Man, you, you, you slim. You had the eight ball leather jacket. You was all, man. Well, well, hold on, brother. Now you asking for dollars. And here I am. You don't even know. You asking the same one that you used to talk about and talk down to for a dollar. You don't even remember me, but I remember you. Ain't that something? Ain't that funny how tables turn? Ain't that funny how you was getting ready to live the same life that they were living, the same life they were promoting and projecting, the same life that they were glorifying, and the Heavenly Father took you out, and you, and, and you spent late nights up commiserating and crying and sad and depressed because you couldn't walk like them and be like them, and now they're asking you for a dollar, asking you for a quarter. And they don't even remember you because they so fried up, brain so fried from smoking all that crack. And you are just as glowing as, and, 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 and come on. But you remember them. They don't even remember their name. You remember their name. They don't even, hey, ain't you? Uh, they, don't even, they don't even remember their name. <laughs> they, don't even, they don't remember your name. They don't even remember their name. But you remember, and you're able to look at them like, Dad, man, I remember. You was the ladies' man. You was the bully. You was the playground bully. Man, you was whipping tail, taking lunch money. Do you remember that? Jumping people after school. Jumping people in the bathroom. Jumping. Remember that? Y'all, you see? And now when you look, Heavenly Father, now look how he look. Now ain't you glad? Aren't you glad he pulled you out? And aren't you glad that you had people like your mama and your grandmama praying for you? Aren't you glad? See, aren't you glad though? That the Heavenly Father saved your life? Could have had you dead like them? Going to hell? Aren't you glad though? Aren't you glad that you wasn't cool? I'm glad I'm, I wasn't cool. I'm glad. See, back then, that back then, you was dying to be, to be a gangster, to be called one. You was dying to be like what they glorified. You was dying. See? To be the baddest bee. Let me help you. You was dying to be the baddest B-I-T-C-H. I'm the baddest chick. 
You was dying to be the baddest. But don't you see now that the baddest are in the lowest part of Sheol? On the judgment and the torment side? See? Can't be that bad in the grave. Cause they bad, bad. Not bad, good. <laughs> see? I'm bad. Well, that's good. Well, they bad. That's bad. They bad, bad. Not bad, good. See that? So now, I'm glad to be a civilian. I'm glad to be the geek and the nerd with the glasses and the ears. I'm glad. That's right. And bald-headed, lost. I'm glad. G thank you. I'm, I love it. Great. 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 Because now, because see, now it then flipped. All this time, we thought it meant something to put ourselves on the pedestal. But now it's better to, to rejoice in your weakness. Now, rejoicing in your weakness is the humble, is the new humble. Actually, it was always the humble way to go. But you didn't know that because you had the ideologies of the world. You had the bell and the Asherah system at you 24-7. Movies and music 24-7. Pumping out their ideologies and their stereotypes that fit young black males in the hood. That's why they pumped out boys in the hood and menace to society. And they gave you the ice T's and the ice cubes and the NWAs and the easy E's. That's why they did that. Cause they knew that they would have the prison, the prison house filled up. They knew that they knew that the prison industrial complex would make billions. They knew that. They knew half, Half wouldn't, wouldn't even graduate from high school. And if you did, you would graduate with a fifth grade level on a fifth grade level reading. They knew that. Coming out of high school can't can barely read, barely write. They, they knew that. And some didn't even make it out. Because the dope game took them. And that's the reason why many had to go back and get their GED because they were selling dope on the side. The dope game took them right away from school. And that's the reason why many of them never went. They never went. They went to the ninth grade and that was it. Some didn't even go to the ninth grade. They dropped out at the eighth. They didn't even go to high school. Eighth grade? How old you in the eighth grade? 13? Because you're 13, eighth grade, 14 going into ninth grade. Some of them dropped out in the, third, in, the, in, the, in the eighth grade, 13 years old on the streets. And then later on, they had to go back to get their GED. If they ever did make it that far, because many of them got killed or went to the penitentiary. Please, y'all. But that's Judah and that's Israel. That's Judah and Israel. Our women, same thing with them. Babies out of wedlock, living off the system. Swiping them cards left and right. See? But they ain't swiping the cards. They letting some, they letting some, some Negro that ain't got nothing going for himself swipe that card. Cause all she wanted was the money so she could buy more drugs, more alcohol. She could buy more hair. She could buy more nails. Come on. Listen. She want to buy tickets to the concert to go see Beyonce. My boo, my boo, bae. To church girl. See, that's what they want. See? Got five kids starving. And you got, you got, you got an independence card with about a thousand dollars a month that you can feed them babies and cook them a meal, a homegrown meal. See? But you won't do that because you're too trifling. Cause you want the because you want the highlights of life. Cause you want to turn up in the pleasure. And so you'll sacrifice your children to Molech. You'll sacrifice them to the bail system. The bail system of Asherah. For momentary pleasure. That's what you do. While the bail system is keeping the man out the house. Got him allured by the drugs and the crime and the, and the women out there. So he can have him more babies to repeat the cycle. So another woman that he got that he had that he's having five more kids by will have a card too. So now the brother got two cards. Now the brother got two independence cards that he can that he can swindle and swipe. See that?
trying to figure out how these women get money and they ain't even got no, and, and, and they living at home all day. Wow. They selling, they selling stamps. That's what they doing. Come on. Y'all, yay. But look what they, look who they sacrificing. Look what they doing. What are they doing? Sex, giving up sex for the money. Brother gone with the card. You got the money. You gave him the sex. Got five kids there. Need something to eat. Fixing them kids noodles. So nutritious. See? Sacrificing them. And this is the reason why we're in the shape we're in today. And that's the reason why the Heavenly Father is getting ready to turn it up. He's getting ready to turn up the heat. Getting ready to turn it up. He's getting ready to turn it up. So 10 kids later and two baby mothers later, Nad is brother in the system. Now, he, now, now that's brother in the penitentiary now. Now in the penitentiary. Now in the penitentiary. With 10 kids, two baby mothers on the system and now he's in the system. Because once you're on the system, you win the system. And now the brother, he ain't getting out. Because he was hot boy out in the street, got caught up. Had a drug deal and it went left. Went sideways, got caught. See? Now you got 10 kids out here with no daddy and no mother. The daddy's locked up and the mama's knocked up. Daddy's locked up, mama's knocked up. And piped out. And sexed out. Listen. All right, y'all. That's it. So we need to repent. Repent. Turn back. Come out of sin. Stop playing around. This ain't to stop playing and turn back. This is serious. This is serious, y'all. This is serious. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear them from heaven, forgive them of their sin, and heal their land. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14. See? Turn from your wicked ways. That's the key. Humble yourselves, pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways. Then he going to hear you. If you don't do those four things, he ain't hearing you. Humble, pray, seek, and turn from your wicked ways. If you don't do those four things, ain't no sense in praying. Ain't no sense in praying. Praying for what? praying for what you praying for I know ain't no sense because you're getting blessed but that's Baal blessing you that's Baal doing that and the Heavenly Father is allowing Baal to bless you so you can think that the Heavenly Father's blessing you by doing what you want to do see now, now you see we didn't know that. All this time, we've been doing the wrong thing. And we've been thinking it's been our Heavenly Father blessing us. But no, the real blessing is when you lost everything and the Heavenly Father had to have you on your face crying in the dirt because you didn't lost everything and everything done folded on you and everything done, done, done left you and everything then died and went away. And, and all your see, that was the that was his blessing. So he, he showed you the difference between his blessing and Baal's blessing. But see, but you swore that when you lost everything, that was Satan. 
And when you was getting blessed, that was our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah. No, it was the other way around. You was getting all that stuff, but that was Baal blessing you, and you losing everything and falling down flat on your behind. That was our Heavenly Father blessing you, and that was his way of blessing you without killing you first and sending you to hell. So he saved you. He spared you. He spared your life. He saved you so that he can really show you the difference between his blessing and Satan's deception. He showed you the difference between his blessing and Satan's deception. There you go. There you go. You guys, that's it. That's it. Thank you, Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you today on this great night. Father, we say thank you, Father. Thank you for showing up each and every time, Father. Thank you for your words, Father. Thank you for your ruach and the fire that comes along with it. Father, thank you, Father, for thanking with my mind, speaking with my lips, and filling with my heart. Father, thank you, Father. Thank you for the Davis Ministry family, Father. Thank you, Father, for the fellowship, Father. Thank you, Father, for those who, who give offerings and sustain the Davis Ministry, Father. May you continue to bless them 160 and 30 times over, 30-fold, Father. Father, we ask, Father, that you will protect all of those in the Davis Ministry family and all of those who came on for the first time tonight to fellowship, Father. May you protect them, their homes, their families, their spouses, their children, Father. May you, may you encourage them, Father. May you empower them, Father. May you, may, may, may you put them through trials and tests, Father, that will build up their faith, Father, because we're going to surely need it as times come, Father, or whatever it is that you do, Father, that would help us to strengthen our faith, Father. We ask that you would do it, Father, because we want to be sure, Father, that when these times heat up and we know that they will, that we will not, we will not renounce you, Father. We will, we will endure to the end. Father, we just thank you, Father, for what you have already done for us, for the things that you have already blessed us with. Father, we just thank you for our health and our strength, Father. We thank you, Father, for our lungs and our heart and our liver and our kidneys and our arms and our legs and hands and feet. Father, we just thank you, Father. We just thank you, Father. Thank you for a roof over our head, clothes on our back, and food on our table, Father, for those that you have privileged enough to still have these, these things, Father. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Father, we come to you in repentance, Father. Anything that was in our hearts, anything that's in our hearts right now, Father, that does not need to be there, Father, may you clean us out and clean us up, Father, continually, Father. May you continue to line us up with your perfect plan and will and purpose, Father, for our lives, Father. But ultimately, Father, it will be, Father, so that we can spend eternity with you and your son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father. May you compel some man, some woman, some boy, some girl who have went down the wrong road. Father, may you turn their hearts around to you, Father, that they may submit to you, Father, and that they may come into full repentance and full submission and surrendering to your will. Father, we thank you. Father, we ask, Father, that you would continue, Father, to, to hover, Father, and protect and cover your righteous, Father, that you will protect us, Father, from this anti-Mashiach beast system that's being set up right before our eyes, Father. Would you protect us, Father? Give us the strength, Father, to keep walking, to keep moving, to keep enduring, to keep praying, keep studying, and stand connected to you, Father. Father, we thank you. We thank you tonight, Father. We thank you. Thank you for what you have already done for us, Father, for what you are currently doing and for what we know you will most certainly do by prayer, supplication and thanksgiving. If it is indeed in your will, Father, we say thank you. It is in all of these blessings that we do ask for in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, our personal Messiah and Savior, we pray. And we most certainly give you the highest utmost praise. And we do gratefully say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 We ain't perfect, but we getting there. We striving every day. And from faith to faith and glory to glory. Every day. We stumble, but we keep on going. That's why he said the righteous may fall seven times, but they'll get back up. But the wicked will stumble. When calamity strikes, <laughs> oh, y'all better get that.
See, don't see, 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 don't, don't let Satan whisper in your ear when you fall. No, you keep getting back up. You keep going. See, we fall one time and listen to Satan and then we go him. Then we follow him. Uh-uh. See, his goal is to condemn you for when you fall. Oh, see, you fell now. Oh, the heavenly father, he ain't going to bless you now. You done now. You see? Are you see? See, he, and then he's going to accuse you. You see, heavenly father, you see, he fell. He fell and he's down and he ain't going to never be nothing. And he's going to keep on doing it and all that. And then you listen and you hear him and you keep listening to the enemy instead of just getting back up and saying, no, I am victorious. I'm righteous. I will conquer. I have the victory. Then you got to be telling yourself that. This is a spiritual warfare. So you got to speak. You see that. Hallelujah. You, you, you know. I don't care what happened, what you did and what you done. And I don't care. You, bet, you better keep walking, though. See, his cleaning ability is contingent upon you walking towards him. Well, see, so if, but if you're walking the other way, he can't, he ain't, he can't clean you. I mean, he could if he wanted to, but you have a decision. Like, he's not going to force you for him to clean. He ain't going to force you to clean you. Now, he ain't going to do that. He's going to let you go your own way, right? And then by you going your own way, you will automatically fall out of his protection. You automatically fall down to where you're going to need him. That, see, so he ain't got to do nothing. You understand that? So you're cleaning, his cleaning you up continually and sanctifying you. That's based on you continuing on in him. You got to you gotta keep going in him. So when you fall, you fall in his hands. When you fall, you falling in him and you moving towards him. Don't allow the fall to make you say, oh, I'm a sinner. I lost. I'm just no good. And, you know, we're not perfect. And, hey, you know, he's going to end in. No, don't do that. Satan wants you to do that. He wants you to give up. I fail. See, I ain't perfect. And, you know, we're all sinners and I ain't asked to be here. And, you know, I'm just going to just die anyway. And, uh-uh. Nope. Fall and fall in him. And you get back up and you let him strengthen you and move you so that he can cure you. Remember, the scriptures just said he wants to cure you from your backsliding. Well, how is he going to cure you if you don't return to him? So that means that every time you got to continue to return to him. Got to return to him. So, you guys, that's it. And remember, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verses 19, right? Says that he, what, what happened? Luke chapter 10. He said, he's given us authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm us. See that? Did you see that? Just like a serpent and a scorpion just popped on. See, you got to have the authority to cast out the serpent and the scorpion. You, you, you got to have that. See? We at the end now. We at the end now. So it's all, you know, it's, it's over now. We, we, we done now. You see, we done now, so it don't matter. So now we can cut, we can cut up and slice up and burn up and barbecue the snakes now. We, we done. You guys, I love you all. That is it. See, keep your, keep your sword sharpened so that when a snake believes they can start flying, you can slice the snake, you can slice up the serpent in midair. See, because you know all of a sudden, See, snakes want to start popping out like they grew wings all of a sudden. You want to take that sword of the spirit and slice them. See? And while they are falling down in two, you can burn them on their way down to the ground. That's it. That's it. You guys, I love you all. Keep your notifications on. Hey. Hey, endure to the end. I love you all. That is it. Good night. And I will see you guys later. All right? All right. Bye-bye. Hallelujah.